Good afternoon from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. I'm Joe Honk. Tennessee Titans have fired Mike Vrabel as their head coach. He finishes his tenure with the team with a 54-45 and record, two division titles, two wins and three losses in the postseason, and, of course, those two wins coming in 2019 when he led the team to the AFC Championship. Around the NFL, the Jaguars have also made some firings as they have fired decent defensive coordinator Mike Caldwell as well as several members of of his offensive staff. Also, the running back coach has been let go as well. And the Tennessee Vols got some good news just a few moments ago as Temple defensive back transfer Jalen McMurray has committed to Tennessee. He was a freshman All-American in 2022, and he still has two years of eligibility remaining. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, you need to visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Vols, the flagship station for your Tennessee Titans, as well as home to 3HL. This is 1045 The Zone. Three HL 1045 The Zone. Brew Doherty with you on a very cloudy and cool day. Not as cloudy and cold as it's going to be on Monday. Oh. High of 26, low of minus one, winter storm coming. That's just bunk. <laughs> Bunkity bunk, bunk, bunk. Boy, yeah. wi- winter just rolled through the Titans facility today. Knocked it right out. We told y'all yesterday we didn't think you'd be back. We also said there was probably a meeting yesterday. Word around the campfire this morning. We all talked about it on text message. There was a final meeting. I heard there was a meeting today. And sure enough, there was. And then there you go. Vrabel's gone. Uh, Your reaction, 615-737-1045. Mike Vrabel done with the Tennessee Titans. The search is on. Um, Miss Amy did an interview with with, uh, Mike Keith and Rhett Bryan that we will play for you in a little bit. Um, Blaine and Mickey aired it. I heard the end of it. I still haven't heard all of it. So I'm anxious to hear that. Uh, And then then we'll go from there. But uh, today is a reaction day for sure. 615-737-1045. 615-737-1045. Mike Vrabel done with the Tennessee Titans. Don Davenport is here. Hey. Let's go. Happy Tuesday to you guys. What up, Doe Babsy? There's uh, Titans some Tuesday. emotional Titans fans out there. That is for sure. Players as well. Well, of course the Don't players are going to be emotional. A lot of opinions all over the place. Lots of opinions. So Schefter, Many of them on the side that this is a mistake by the Titans. When you and, say that's a majority of them? Yes. Yeah. You're talking about player-wise? No, just in general. Uh, everybody I think in yeah. general, that's that's kind that's of the, the opinion. I we'll, know we'll, it's the national consensus. We'll, we'll get to yeah. our opinions about, about it in just mm-hmm. a little bit. But Rod Slay is here. I'm in the building. Hey, I'm, I'm in, the building. in the building. Best believe I'm in the building. Better, Better be, be ready. ready. Hey. I'm in the building. building. I ain't got no Time for the show. The other thing we told y'all yesterday was uh, listen to the zone all day today because something might happen. Show up. Yes, indeed it is. Broke, and, broke during Buck's show, right? Yes, okay. and we also talked about how this is going to be the most interesting offseason in the history of this organization, and we start with this. Mike Vrabel done with the Tennessee Titans. Um I started to ask you how surprised are y'all, but we kind of hit that on Friday and also yesterday um, that all of us thought that he would be done. Um, what What is your initial reaction as we sit here on the day that it happened, Don Davenport? After yesterday, not surprised at all. And uh, just from hearing things and, and especially now that it's a done deal, you hear a little bit more, um, not a surprise at all. Ha- something had to be done. The word around the campfire is that he wanted out. He was under contract, which makes it a little more difficult. Also, the whole trade thing. I know a lot of people are surprised that they didn't trade him. Don't know how that went down. I hear that he might have had final say in terms of where he was going to go and all of those things. So He does. That is in the in 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 NFL coach's contract that you can trade a coach, but the coach regardless, has to be a willing partner in that trade and sign off on that. So if you're Mike Vrabel, why would you do that? If you know that they're looking to move on anyway, and and if you listen to what Miss Amy said, 
she didn't say he wasn't a willing participant, but if you read between the lines, she basically kind of said mm-hmm. that, you know. And if you're Mike Vrabel, why would you do that? I would I wouldn't agree to a trade and and take capital from the team I'm going to if I know from our conversations that you're going to fire me anyway and I have a year left on my contract and you're going to have to pay me. I'm not going to be a willing trade participant. Yep. Are you? No. Why make it, it makes easy? no sense. No, yeah, because it, 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 it then be you're going to take capital away from where you're going on yeah. top of it when at this point Mike Vrabel is a huge commodity as a head coach and he knows he's going to get a job somewhere. Plus, who knows for sure. where like who knows where he was going where he's trying to be traded. Like he might not agree with that. Like we right. assume is New England. New England, but, we don't, but maybe we don't know. Know that. Yeah. yeah. It could have been anywhere. Like, no. Nah. You can watch the show YouTube, Facebook Live, and Twitch. Twitch, please. A lot of y'all are in there. The FNM Bank Chat is open and uh, we'll be rolling through that. Uh, Ron Slay, uh, what up, on, though, Yor? on this day that the Titans part ways with Mike Vrabel, uh, your thoughts? I have, um, I am a bit um, surprised as I thought he would have a, another year to try to get it right. Um, if you look at the overall picture of it um, from a business standpoint, like you're losing not only in wins and losses, but you're losing also economically in the stadium as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, the business of it, you got to pack the stadium. Like, we win, yes, you have that's to all. Win to do yeah, you got to win to do that. You know what I'm saying? So, as much as you believe in it, you got to ask yourself, okay, what's going to change? What's going to change moving forward? All right, I took the ownership of it and grabbed it and said, you know what? Oh, wait a minute. Let's change the GM. All right, GM change. All right, let's see if you guys can work together. Maybe um, you figure it out. Will you hire, fire, whatever it may be, kind of stuck with his guns and, hey, we can figure this out. We can push ahead, which all competitive. We talk about it all the time. Being a competitive guy, you're going to push ahead. You know what you got can work. You know, I mean, it's worked before. Why won't it work again? But it's starting to be two years. It's about to be a third year. Who knows what will happen? Some change. I, <laughs> all the other changes had been made. And if you're given enough rope at the end of the day, you didn't make any changes. You were going to stick with it. Well, I mean, that means you got to stand 10 toes and fall on that sword. That's part of it. You know what I mean? You stood on your decision. Okay, so I, I respect that. Now I got to make a decision. And the decision was to move on. Do I think Vray was a good coach? Yes, I do. I do, Most too. definitely. I do, do too. I think, do I honestly believe that at some point he could turn it around? Yes, I do. Did he show signs of it? No, he did not. Let me ask you this. Philosophically, if we're right in what we've been saying about how they want to turn the offense into a more modern system, Mm -hmm. was Vrabel the guy that was going to do that? It would show um, through his offensive coordinator hires, through (sighs) him having a headset on the sideline, through, I think, his desire not to trade Derrick Henry and and – let that thing go without getting anything for him. You hadn't seen it. Yeah, it, it I'm was just a, one, I'm just opining. No, I, yeah, I'm yeah, opining. Yeah, and, and, no, yeah. and, and to I'm, answer that, I know exactly where you're going. But go ahead and it's, answer it's it because too, I've got a different view. To, if if that's the case, then well, it didn't happen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you, like it didn't happen this year. You, you chose to do that. All yeah. right, let's cool. Make some happen. It yeah. didn't happen this year. Like, regardless of the losses, uh, I mean, regardless of the injuries or whatever, like, that's a part of it, too. That's mounting. As much as you want to say, man, you can figure it out, that's mounting, man. And it's only so long that you can turn your your uh, 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 turn your cheek to it and be like, all right, man, he's going to figure it out. You're getting a roar from this side. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm going to well, put real quick, this... be- before you go, I I, I want to make this point. I'm not saying that that was there was one specific no, that's, reason. That's an opinion. We no. and so we'll opinion. talk through yeah. all yeah. of these right, things. Right, right, right. But I did say yesterday that if they do it, when they do it, you're going to look back and go, okay, it kind of makes sense now. Like you kind of mm-hmm. could see it coming. See, I don't. I Sorry. don't even think. And I want to get more of your take on what went on inside that building too. But but here is. My take on, and this has nothing to do even, honestly, Mayor, I think with your point about the offense, I think that's a part of it because it's not just one thing. But I also think that moving forward, a couple of things, if you're going to kind of 
manifest into this new offense. Maybe you don't feel like Vrabel, you know, is is the guy or willing to do that or willing to hire the right staff in order to do that or fire some of the staff that's not getting that done as far as, you know, um, growing mm-hmm. to that point, then that's part of it. But this is the other thing, I think, and I think it goes all the way back to John Robinson and Mike Vrabel not being on the same page. Mike Vrabel wanted Ryan Cowden as the GM there. That's we we pretty much know that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Rand Carthon was brought in, and at the end of the day, I feel like there was such a division in that building between Vrabel guys and Carthon guys mm-hmm. that it never meshed. Miss Amy said, "This is something I've been watching the entire season," and and to me, that is a very telling comment. Because I feel that the division between the Vrabes guys and the Carthon guys and what their view of what this year was supposed to be mm-hmm. is basically what forced Miss Amy to make a decision. Because at the end of the day, what did Miss Amy tell you once, Brent? Like, I let my football people make football decisions. Sure. But when things let them go do their jobs. Exactly. But when things go awry and and that's not happening and people are on such different pages in what their view of where this organization needs to go then miss amy as the ceo as a very smart businesswoman, as a i don't give a crap who i have to fire to move forward so that we can collaborate right. that was not happening in that building and i think that after watching this season she felt like there was not a fix for that division inside of that building remember what now, we this t- is all my opinion but right, 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 right. just putting things together i think you had a, a distinct draw in the sand of rabel guys carthon guys and it just wasn't going to work in order to move the franchise forward and i think the reason she made the decision is because for the first time in a long time if you're the titans you're actually i think in a good spot to become a contender in the next two years yeah and so if you're that, going to do that, it, that's the one opinion that's blowing time. my mind. The people that are like, well, you're going to have an empty stadium when they go to the new building. No. What? People want to win. I know I know a lot of people are upset. And that's the emotion. just wants to win. Th- that's the emotional side of people. But I'm telling you, if they start 6-0 and next year, what? where are you? In the building? I mean, but listen, and it might not be next winning. year, Mayor. They have yeah. a lot of holes to fill. Oh, I, yeah, but I know that. I'm just saying, no, it's but, all about winning. But to your point, like if they don't start six and zero next year, people are going to be like, "Oh, see, terrible decision." Yeah. Who knows who the head yeah. coach is going to be, right? But if you look at where the Titans are positioned, you the last thing you can have is dissension inside your building yeah. when you have so much potential with cap space, mm-hmm. with high draft pick, with a young, promising, possible franchise quarterback, with a rookie class that just gave you uh, some good things, with the ability to move forward, with you know some positives that you saw in that last game against the Jags. Mm-hmm. The last thing you need is for there to be bickering or two head people that are not on the same page all right so we've talked about modernize the offense is was Vrabel going to be that guy to do that because that's what it seemed like they wanted to do moving forward also dissension in the building I think is definitely worth talking about it all comes back I just kept I just kept coming back to the last couple of days because last week I I was like man I'd be surprised if he didn't get one more year with Rand you know yeah. what I mean? To do one more off season with Rand. And I still kind of am. But but now, like I said, when you look back, look back to Teron Davenport's interview. And I brought this up yesterday with Vrabel and with Rand Carthon. And when Rand said, I don't care who has control, that really stuck out to me. And so then I started asking around. And what I found was Vrabel has all of it. And so then you start talking about a head coach with all the control and he's Six and 18 in his last 24? It's a bad look. That's when I said a couple months ago, like, I think there is a scenario where he's not back. And sure enough. And if you're a GM, aren't don't you want your guy in there? Yeah, well, I mean, why wouldn't you? It's an opportunity for Miss Amy to restructure how they do business over there, where you have a general manager that has the hand. That has the power. You have a coach to come in and be the coach. Is it going to be Bobby Slowick from from Houston? I don't know. Maybe. He's got ties to ran. Plus, you damaged the Texans by doing that. His offense was pretty damn good. I I don't know. We're not there yet. But I'm I'm just saying, like, this is an opportunity for them to 
reset the structure of that franchise and how who has control and how they do business. Here's the other thing that I know and y'all know too. They have all of their eyes set on opening that building in 2027. That is what As they are contender. consumed. Yeah, that is what they are consumed with right now is what does this franchise look like when we open that new building? Mm-hmm. So here we are, 615-737-1045, 3HL. Mike Vrabel out as Tennessee Titans coach. More next on 104.5 The Zone. What's happening, good people? Ron Slay here, man. Let's go get our um, health in order, people. Like, let's get a little push for it, a little jolt, if you will. Low-T Center can make it a great one in 2024. If you've been feeling a little tired, grumpy, notice lack of motivation and drive, got weight gain and loss of muscle mass, these could all be signs of low testosterone levels. At Low-T Center, they make it easy. Make it happen. All you got to do is go hit them up, lowtcenter.com. Book your appointment online today. That's lowtcenter.com, Low-T Center, reinventing men's health care. Brentwood Jewelry, I want to tell you about my friends, the Amamalee family over there in, uh, in Brentwood, and they can help you out with Valentine's Day coming up. Uh, get that special someone something special from Brentwood Jewelry, and uh, they have you covered. You can uh, check out their watch selection. It is absolutely amazing. This is your spot for watches. You can check out their shop for a pre-owned Rolex, and you can you can make that a gift uh, for Valentine's Day. A fine pre-owned Rolex for a fraction of the cost. Every watch has been meticulously serviced to ensure the highest level of performance and is presented with a two-year warranty. They offer an extensive online selection which includes both prior models or the and the current models for you to compare. Uh, they have all kinds of different brands in the store. Family owned and operated for more than 50 years, located in the heart of Brentwood. The Amomaly family has raised three generations in Nashville, and their family is proud to serve you and their community. From Salem serving and special forces to his sons being local firefighters, you don't get more embedded in the community than the Amomaly family. Check them out, 7012 Church Street in the heart of Brentwood, just off Franklin Road. Exceptional style, exceptional deals every day. For more than 50 years, visit BrentwoodJewelry.com.
Three HL 1045 the zone. It is Tupac Tuesday. Brett Doherty, Don Davenport, Ron Slay, the executive producer of 3HL, is Joe Hunk. What's up? Coming up at 3.30-ish, we will uh, play a conversation that Mike Keith and Rhett Gordy B., Rhett Bryan, executive producer of Titans Radio, had with Amy Adams Strunk. We will play that at 3.30. I have only heard a snippet of it, so I'm anxious to hear that. It's good. Really good. I mean, it's good because it's the only questions you're going to get answered from her right now. She's not going to stand up at a podium and answer questions. And Mike Keith asked, Mike Keith asked the exact questions mm-hmm. that everybody wants. Now, I'm sure she knew what questions were coming, but mm-hmm. you at least get her thoughts on it. And I thought there were some very telling things in what she said. Agreed. Totally agreed. All right. In the meantime. In between time. Peace. Is there peace? Peace to Rabes. Yep. Oh, deuces. Yeah. Peace out. <laughs> Sorry, Rabes. <laughs> We do love you, Braves. Uh, I mean, my it's guess right. is he'll my, be successful somewhere else. From what I hear, my guess is he's good with this. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's, yep. He's all right. And listen, can I say this too? And Mike it doesn't Vrabel, mean he's not a good football coach. No, he is a good. He's going to be a really good football coach. He's going to go somewhere else. He's going to be successful. And I'm going to tell you part of the reason why is because he's going to learn from this situation and this job at what worked and what didn't work. And he's going to go somewhere else and be very successful. So Titans fans, relax. Yeah, it's going to happen. Get ready get for ready it. For it. Because he's going to go in. Yeah, because he got experience <laughs> this in this job, coaching job. Knowing, okay, I, I went at it with John Robinson. I went at it with Rand Carthon. Like, you know, maybe uh, I walk into a situation learning some things from this job, and I think that's exactly what's going to happen with Mike Vrabel, and he's going to be successful. So get ready for it. It just wasn't going to be – it wasn't going to be here moving forward with Miss Amy in charge. So you know it's happening. I used, I <laughs> Go used, ahead and accept it now. <laughs> I used my situation at another radio station before I came here as an example. Sometimes it's not because – like, everybody wants to bl- put place blame on everything in today's world. It's multiple. Everybody wants to blame ev- something. Like, you got to, who's who's at fault? Mm-hmm. It could be a situation where he wanted something, they wanted something else. All right, let's move on. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't mean you're bad. <laughs> like, that don't, no. mean you're, that don't mean you're a bad coach. Like, it's just, it did not work. And it's okay. It could have been something along the journey where you, it was a misstep. It's all right. You go back, and when you come across it, like Babs just said, you come across it again, you don't make the same mistake. It's, it's, and you handle it's something simple. different. Yeah, it's simple, man. Like and I think you picked some of that up watching the Bill O'Brien debacle in Houston, right? Yeah. It's just, it's just funny enough how of it. emotional. He was doing okay as a coach, and then he got all the hand. Yep. Like th- and fell apart. The roaring sounds of, man, you got you to gotta do something, man. Like, what are you going to do with the OC? What, like, he got to do something with the – he did. Yeah. He went and got who he wanted to get. It didn't work. <laughs> like, it's, it's okay. It didn't work. Like, the emotions in it, that's, this is amazing to me. Like, this what, is how, this what is, about this? I love it, though. I'm this here for it. I'm here for all the – I'm here for the emotion. I'm this here for crazy. the pissed off. I'm here for the this opinion. I'll tell you what I am not I here a, for. I was blown, blown away then. Yeah. I'm not here for the, oh, there goes Jeffrey Simmons. Oh, Jeffrey Simmons <laughs> gonna going to get traded in the offseason. Oh, going, no y'all? more Jeff Sim- I'm like, what are you talking about? Big Jeff is now the pillar of this franchise. I, th- I, think it, I think it's because some people think because of what has happened, they are just starting over from scratch. They're not. You can't. They don't look at it like that. I'm telling you. I'm like, now, Big this, Jeff ain't going anywhere. Th- this is an overhaul rebuild type thing. Like, I don't think you can run from that anymore. But you're not starting over from scratch. No. Like, oh, let's get rid of every good player so we can just start over. Now, Derrick Henry's probably gone now. <laughs> well, he was gone, gone anyway. Like, I, I, know, I, I, I think they wanted to. I, there was like I think this is part of, part of me that maybe the king would come back. That's why he's been saying bye and all that stuff. Like, he knows. They want to go in a different direction offensively. They just do. They, I mean, they told us, Rand told us that last offseason, and Vrabel signed off on it, at least publicly. Apparently not, like not privately. <laughs> All right, uh, let's do this. Uh, <laughs> hear from Amy Adams Strunk here in about five minutes. In the meantime, in between time, peace, all those things. G-Money in Nolensville. G-Money, what up? Man, what is going on, good people? I have purposefully stayed away from calling in because I knew that all I had to pour for y'all was a big old glass of dumpster juice, and that's what the Titans have been serving us 
all year. Now, based off what y'all are saying, y'all are way more in the know, obviously, than I am, Brent. But let me let me just tell you a few things that don't add up to me. All right. Okay. Right. If you say that Rabel was given all of the control, right, this past year, why would you even hire Rand Cawthon then? Why, why do that? Why is there a division if Rabel has all of the controls? Secondly, if you did give him all the controls and the lease was so short that you only gave him a year, what does that say about you as an owner? I don't Did know that. I, make... I don't know that he was given all of the control. I think because of a bunch of things that happened, he ended up with. And I'm not going to say all of it. I shouldn't say all control. I, I don't think anyone has all control over anything. But uh, yeah. he he no, ended I think up there with was more... a, still a split, which oh, was he, part of the problem. He this ended year. up with more hand than like I, I than a, a typical I, head coaching I mean, situation. Way more. Right. That, that's, okay. what that, that's what I hear. That's what I hear. I got you, and and look, you not to pencil you in. You, I I give I, I hear your clarification. No, I get, I get I'm just you. going by what you. you're saying. My all. So, but but I'm like, if okay, if even if he had way more, I just don't understand why would you pull it one year after the other. We and and revision is, is, is uh, uh, history here. We've been through this coaching carousel crap before. Before we found one that was competent, like Mike Vrabel. And my under my thought process is. If he did have more control, if he did have more say so, then why did he want to leave? Is it because he fully didn't have all of it? Who, that, that, that's, that's I don't think nobody what, said what, he wanted to leave. Real quick, though, I don't think who said. No, I, I, no, I, I think that he want. Oh, I he think he wanted out. Okay, okay, yeah. all right. And he was under yeah, contract. Yeah, okay, my bad. Yeah, yeah. If, if you say he, yeah, he, he wanted to leave, but my, my thing is, is okay. It, it's it's so easy to fire somebody. It's so easy. To walk away, the no, hard not. part is get is is get. No, no. Listen, listen. To what I'm saying, it's easy to walk away, but it's more harder to make to try to make things work. But if you're gonna fire somebody, you better damn well sure that you have something better than who you fired. And based off of kind of what I've been hearing today, hell, if it ain't Jim Harbaugh, who's the next best option? It's Rabel, from what I can hear. It's so like if you if he. Everybody agrees he's going to be a great coach. Okay, if it didn't work out for the one year that he had more control. So I still think that's too short of a leash to be pulled. I think think it was longer than a year. And I think you answered your own question. I think that I think that Miss Amy was moving toward a different structure within that organization with Rand Carthon. And I think that that's what was going to take place this offseason. Okay. Now, 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 get off the pot kind of thing. Okay, now I'm glad you said that because now I feel like I think we were all in the greens because y'all was y'all was on this too about John Robinson needs to go because he, he missed too many his his, his picks and, and all that other stuff. Yeah. But if you if you're gonna put Vrabel lay blame at Vrabel for some of that too, I would have rather them fire Vrabel when they fired uh, Robinson because why would you go through pick a young QB? Yeah. Go through some of these changes, and now you're going to bring in a new coach. That's a fair now, point. Now Levis well, has to learn a new system. Fourth so, year in a row. Knows going, yeah, fourth then, year in a row it, for Levis with a new well, system. At least he's yeah. used to it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but but that that then causes another problem, and then you got so many other opportunities uh, open in the NFL as far as head coaches that now you have to really go compete for who you want to go and. And listen, I, I, me personally, I think San Diego is a better, better uh, uh, attractive job to me. I think they got may, way more talent right now as it stands. I know we got the ninety million, but it just man, I, oh, I don't, man. I don't agree with it. Well, he, here's the thing. It. Here's the thing, and I, I know like it's easy to like line up who the best candidates are and put them on a blank sheet of paper, and everybody would say Harbaugh and Vrabel, okay? But who's the best guy for you? Who who do you vision? And I can't answer that because my answer is going to be different than maybe your answer, G-Money. And I bet we all three have it, different answers in this yeah. room. And it, and it really doesn't matter. What matters is what is Amy Adams' strong view and what are the conversations going on within that Carthen? building right, yeah. and what does Rand think and all of those things because I'm telling you they're focused on that building. And you got to think walking into the situation, G, like um, Vrabel, this was like when Malarkey got let go and Vrabel came in like, who was to say Vrabel was going to be a good coach then? Yeah, we didn't know. Okay. Nobody knew. 
You know what I'm saying? When, so it's always going to be a gamble in. Oh, there were a lot of questions about that. That's, when that's when that saying. happened, so oh, yeah. yeah. And she hit on it. There so were a lot I, of people like, that were pissed off about that. Yeah, that, that's, well, that's I, I remember at the, I remember at that time, a lot of people was like, yeah, you got a good one in Mike Vrabel. I, I knew some people was like, he, he didn't have the head coaching experience. But I also remember at that point in time, everybody was really excited and was like, yeah, y'all got a good one. And then he won coach of the year, too. Yeah. Listen, I know that was yeah. two years ago. He's a I good coach. A, what have you I know it's a one. What have you done for me lately? I just let, still think it's too. too G money, we, we we got yeah, to run, man. Go. I got yes, I got I got to get Miss Amy in here. We're going to get Miss Amy, but let me just also point this out to G money. You, He's saying, okay, well, if that was the case, then why do you even hire Rand Carthen and mm-hmm. this and that? You know. I, I think that Miss Amy loved Mike Vrabel, thought he was a very good coach, and maybe thought that bringing in a new GM, new those two Brazil. would work. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't. Right. And, and you, you have to hire a GM. Prognosticate yeah. everything and be like, oh, well, that give relationship's give not going to work. Well, then now she just watched this season and how it unfolded. And listen, Miss Amy talks to everybody in that building. She knows her information. She gets information. Yep. All of that. She is everything not like ownership her. in the past that her. doesn't pay attention. Yep. She pays attention to everything. So maybe it's she thought it would work yeah. and that Rand and Braves would be great together and this would work and then it ended up not. So it, to go back and say, well, why did she make the decision a year ago then if she's just going to fire him? Well, clearly she thought it would work. All right, Miss Amy uh, sat down with Mike Keith, the voice of the Titans and the executive producer for Titans Radio, Rhett Bryan. They had this conversation. Check it. I'm joined by Titans controlling owner Amy Adams Strunk to discuss her decision to make a change in the head coaching position with the ball club. Amy, you mentioned in your statement that it was as difficult a decision as you've had to make in this role. What has Mike Vrabel meant to the Titans organization? Well, you're right, Mike. It was a very difficult decision. And Mike was our head coach for six seasons, and he brought a lot of passion every day to work, um, to players, to staff, to, to, to the organization. And I will always appreciate what Mike brought and wish the best for Mike and his family. Can you tell us the reason or reasons that you decided to make this change? The last two seasons have been very disappointing. And the, the fans felt it, I felt it. We made changes last year, and I came to believe we needed to make a change to the coaching staff. People want to know, when did you come to this decision? It wasn't a last night or a month ago or whenever. It's just kind of been all season watching and it, it was difficult, but I thought it was time to make that change. There's been discussion in a lot of different circles about the possibility of trading the head coach. Was consideration given to trading Mike Vrabel? Well, yes, there was, but there's a bit of misconception about a coach's contract, say, versus a player's contract. A coach's contract, you can't trade them unless they're a willing partner to that trade. So, yes, we thought about it, but at the end of the day, with league rules the way they are, it would have maybe put us back three weeks. And, you know, honestly, to to get the right head coach, I was just not willing to to go to the back of the line and take a chance of missing out on someone we, we really wanted. All right, so I'm going to put two questions together. Will the new head coach report to Rand Carthon or to you and... Who will have control of the 53-man roster? Today is about the coaching staff. I'm not quite ready to answer that question. I still have some things to work through, but I will answer both those questions at the end of the process. So when it's done, you'll make this clear publicly who the head coach reports to and who has control of the roster? Absolutely, yes. Some specifics about specifics in the search now. A lot of people are saying that Amy Adams Strunk is only going to consider someone with an offensive background to be the head coach. Is that true? Actually, no. I believe we need to improve across the board. So it's important to find someone that brings in, you know, a lot of diverse ideas and fresh perspective. And that's the most important thing in that new head coach. All right, let me take that a step further. So then what you're saying is you're going to be very interested in the staff that a potential head coach can show you when he talks to you. 
Yes, uh, that's going to be very important. The head coach is the leader in the face, but you know that staff is super important. So we're gonna we're gonna want him to bring in strong candidates, and we want to hear who he's going to bring in. What would you say you have learned from your previous coaching searches, general manager searches, that you will apply to this particular search in 2024? Cast a wide net. Take your time. We have a vision and we want that coach to, to have that vision and we're going to work to get it right. At this moment that you make this change and set a new course for the Tennessee Titans, what does Amy Adams Strunk want Titans fans to know at this time? I have high expectations and I'll never apologize for that. And these fans deserve a great team and they deserve a championship brought to the city. And that's what we're gonna to work towards. And I'm prepared to make the hard decisions to hopefully get us there sooner. This team has a bright future. We have Rand, we have a promising young quarterback. I mean, the sky's the limit. We've got cap space, we've got a great draft position. Things are bright for the Titans. I'm really very, very optimistic. And I'd like to thank the fans for hanging with us this year. It, it, our season was, it, it was unacceptable, but we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there sooner rather than later. There she is, Miss Amy Adam Strunk with Mike Keith and Rhett Bryan. What'd you guys think? Actually, hold that. Let's There's take a, a quick break. Unpack. And then we will uh, discuss next. 3HL 1045 The Zone. All right, join the Nashville Predators Saturday, January 13th. They're going to take on the Islanders at 7 p.m. at Bridgestone Arena. That's coming up this weekend. Big Saturday night in Smashville. Plus, it's hockey for everyone night. Celebration of all the diversity in Smashville. And hockey is a sport for everyone. The NHL's United by Hockey Mobile Museum will be on the plaza for fans to enjoy before the game. If you're wondering what that is, it's pretty cool. It's a traveling museum, free fan experience. Celebrates hockey's trailblazers, changemakers, and business leaders spanning a ton of various demographics so go join smashville have a good saturday night out this saturday against the islanders get tickets for the game at nashvillepredators.com slash tickets what's happening people ron slay here millican corp that's the people you need to rely on when the company you need to rely on them man people because it's family that's, that's what it is trust them to do any concrete and asphalt work because it won't be their fault or your fault but it's probably like your fault if you choose the wrong asphalt. And you can you can depend on that. The weather is coming, man. Snow and ice remove, but they do it. They take care of all of that work. Experts in concrete asphalt grading and drainage services, you can't get any better than this. The difference between Millican Corp and normal concrete companies, they provide top-notch customer service. So you probably call companies, and it's been weeks before you can get a response. That doesn't happen with Millican. They hit you right back. Yes, within 24 hours, typically your project can be started within a four-week window. That's right. So ain't no need sitting around and waiting on spring until you get that first warm day to go enjoy it. No, it can get started right now. Don't believe the myth. Millican Corp, all you got to do is hit them up. 615-238-5909. Head to millicancorp.com.
Three HL one zero four five. The zone. Brent Doherty, Don Davenport, Ron Slay, Mike Vrabel fired. He gone. He gone. Um, we just played uh, a bit of audio from Miss Amy that uh, Mike Keith and Red Brian did. She said, among other things, as difficult a decision that she's had to make in this role. Uh, there was a process involved um, that she thought about pretty much all season. Um, there was consideration to trading him, but she said there's a misconception about coaching contracts and wanted to kind of sh- shine some light on that. Um, the coach has to be a willing trading partner, and she was concerned that they would get in the back of the line and miss out on someone they might have wanted. Mm. Um, she said that she will say who reports to who and who has control of the 53 when this is done. That would be nice. That's yeah, not I, something we've that's what I was known say. for a while. I, I think mean, that that's something she's learned over the last bingo! couple of years. Yep. It's a learning process. That she Bingo. has to. That was, that, that was, I took that immediately from it. That's what I was coming back to. That's either. been the issue with all of this from John Robinson to now. I think football fans um, sit there and think, okay, this draft pick didn't work and this draft pick didn't work, so John Robinson's at fault. I said, I've said for a long time that Mike Vrabel had part of that process. You have said that, yep. yep. And that there were players that he wanted. Which – as I feel like they should, hence the right. whole collaboration. Right, right, where, right, like, right. if you're a coach, you want input at least into right. who you're getting on your roster. This just feels like a, that she's kind of hitting a reset button with how that organization is run. Mm-hmm. And she's clarifying yep. what job does what. Because she learned that it didn't work. Right. And it's the giving the fans way. a little bit more transparency. So you, it won't be no more guessing. It was so, like so I, much guessing going on. I'm anxious to... to Yep. You know, at the new head coach press conference for her to say that because that's going to be a part of the interview process, right? Yep. Well, and also to your point, guess what? There's no point in fingers and there's no, like, if Ran, if this is Rand's thing now, you're on the clock, yep. bud. And maybe she's figured out, like, you, you need to have. But um, Rand wants that, I'm sure. Yeah, you need a right? lot of things I mean, you to different guys. Like, that's what, he, that's what he want. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't want a coach. I want to be at practice. Yeah, I want to look, check it out. Hey, how y'all doing? But that's what that's what the coach do. That's what the staff does. They work out there on the field. I think identifying I mean, identifying roles will be yeah. That's just huge. Huge. Boom. Um, you quit using my words. She huge. said. She said this season was unacceptable. She said I have high expectations and I will not apologize for that. Fans deserve a winning team. They do. What was they your take? Do. Me or Slay? Hit it. A take on Miss Amy? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was telling. I thought um, she's speaking with someone. Like, in order to grow, is you can't look in the mirror and grow. You have to be able to bounce things off of that's a great other point. people. You know what I'm saying? In so, life. Yeah, and that's part of it. And she's looking at the experience, and then somebody, she was able to write down what she did and say, mm, I can't do it this way. Can't do it this way. The same thing we were talking about, the reason for able to be successful going to another job. And that is the growth. Regardless of how many times it takes to get it right, as long as you don't start repeating the same steps, it's going to be fine. And you look at it and you start to see delegating responsibility to people, making it known, the more transparency. She's already transparent because she's out here all the time. Right. You know what I'm saying? So she cares what you think. But she doesn't speak a lot, but she is everywhere. Yeah, and, and if you speak to her, like, she's going to ask you She'll right talk, there on the spot. Yeah. So And she and she also um, said, this is what the fans wanted. I'm listening to you guys because I'm out here at the tailgates and things of that nature. Yep. We so want to win take, a championship. Yeah, like, okay, so this is going to be the steps. And I think she also understands that the person that's at the head of the table is not going to always be liked. And it's okay and it's understood. But as long as your franchise continues to grow and people that are married to the franchise, you got something good. No one, I think this is what she learned also. Well, this is what I learned. No one is bigger than the franchise. Right. If you want to have a successful franchise. No one is bigger than that. If this is the case, Vrabel was becoming bigger than the franchise by gathering information, by having hand. Like, that can't work. Not in... Name a successful franchise where it works. Outside of the owner. Cowboys, Steelers, 49ers. Patriots um, fell Patriots. apart in New England. You feel what I'm saying? I like, mean, it worked for a while. Houston it worked fell for a apart while. in Houston. But you also had Tom Brady that And you had stuff delegated to it. It was much easier. So, Do you know what else stood out to me about her towards the end there? Miss Amy said, 
I believe that staff is super important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think if you maybe read a little bit between the lines, do you remember Malarkey was supposedly going to be the head coach and then he wouldn't fire Terry Rubisky and and work on that. I wonder if maybe that played a little bit into it with how Vrabel selected certain staff members too because she just said, I I understand when talking about looking for the next head coach, Mm -hmm. that staff is super important. And that's all the way down. Yep. And the ability to develop talent and develop players. And I, I also believe, like, you're going to have – but this is away from that. But <laughs> I also believe you're going to have emotional people attached to Vrabel. Like, you getting – you saw LaJuan come out. I, I saw um, Lindale White come out and speak. Like, from that perspective, I'm attached to a coach, too, without question. But – when the homecoming happens, we all come back to the franchise. We don't go to the coach's house to celebrate the eight, nine, ten years that I played with the Titans. No, we're going to go meet at the stadium where everybody, you get hurrahed. Like, whoa, yeah, this is, welcome back, everybody. It's a part, it's a marriage in that order. Like, your piece is to it, piece is to the puzzle. You're not the puzzle. You know what I'm saying? So the emotion, that's the part I don't understand. And for players to... To to say like it's yes everybody's shocked, but to say you don't agree with it like as a player you have an opportunity to fix that. You know how you fix that? Win. <laughs> Play better. It's it, it's it's, well, it's simple. Somebody on the Go win. Line. Go win. Yeah. I, I, it, it, well, you knew the players were going to be all in on Vrabes. They're supposed to. That's cool. Which is awesome because I think Vrabes is a good coach. I think he gets the That's most cool. out of his players. Mm-hmm. I think they play for him. Yep. I think all of those things are super, mm-hmm. super important. And you can see how much his players love him. Yeah. And and from, like, staff members in that building that I've heard from, you can tell how much they love him. Yep. He checks in on families. Yep. He cares about his people. Yep. He loves his people. Really good players coach. And, and that is super important important I 100% agree with that but but if you can't have all of it and there can't be collaboration all across the building then it doesn't matter part of it sorry mayor miss Amy what you think thoughts Rand's Um, coming up at four by the way yeah Rand Carthon general manager of the Titans will address the media at four we'll carry it live here on 104.5 the zone so we have limited time here um I I think, see, I I look at things first from a broadcast perspective because mm-hmm. I thought it was interesting that Titans Radio was doing an interview with Amy Adams Strunk, and I think there's some pressure involved in that yes. to not have it look like the company line, and I thought that they did a great job of asking exactly the questions that we all want yep. in a five-minute conversation, right? Yep. Right. Um, and I think she did a really good job of being as open as she possibly could be Um, With her responses, I think it goes back to a couple of things. I think it goes back to, I think she views this as an opportunity to get structure in her organization and to identify roles, right? And that that had gotten skewed. Mm -hmm. I also think she has, she will unapologetically do anything she can to try to win. Yeah. So I know a lot of people are upset, and I get that. I, I'm really unemotional about this thing. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we'll see. Rand Carthon coming up next on 104.5 The Zone. You gonna go or am I going? What's happening, good people? <laughs> Everybody, hey, we still here. Hey, 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 hey. Is it us? Go. It's yeah, going down, go. man. Listen, the weather is coming. It's gonna be super, super cold. It's like wind minus blowing. one next week. Yes, minus In one. In this wind, my power crazy. went out last night. I, and listen, we had the Christmas things still flying out, reefs and things like that. Oh. The power is next. It's gonna be a problem. Cove generators, they have your solution because that's all they do is solve problems like this bad now is a great time to call cove generators get ready for next week because it's going to be a doozy cove generators can take care of you it's all they (laughs) did they do they have portable generators um and they are your premier generac home standby generator dealer get an estimate on that generac home standby generator and be ready for the winter weather next week call cove generators Phone number 931-559-3311. Now's a great time. You can visit them online, slaycovegenerators.com. Now you got to know terms and conditions may apply. Call for details and stay connected through it all. 
Got the Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. That's where you need to go to get that next new vehicle. And you can start the new year out right with a brand new vehicle from Gupton Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. The start of something new sales event going on now at Gupton. Maybe 2024 is the year for a new Jeep. Maybe a sporty new Dodge Charger or a full-size Ram truck. Located just 30 minutes from downtown Nashville, Gupton is just down the road, 24 west toward Clarksville, exit 35, nine miles outside the city. Beautiful drive into the best vehicle buying experience that you've ever had. 3450 Tom Austin Highway in beautiful Springfield, Tennessee. Again, just 30 minutes from downtown Nashville. The start of something new, sales event 2024. You got to go to Gupton. You can check them out online while you pretend to work or wait for the general manager to uh, address the meeting. Yeah, GuptonMotors.com. That's the website. All the dealership information is there. All of the inventory is there as well. Uh, Daniel Gupton and his crew ready to help you out. All they want is to get you in the vehicle that's right for you. So there will be no pressure at all. They want what you want, you in that right vehicle. So get it done. Gupton, Dodge Chrysler, Jeep Ram. Good afternoon from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. Mike Vrabel is out as the head coach for the Tennessee Titans. Coming up in mere moments, Rand Carthon meets with the media. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, you need to visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Vols, the flagship station for your Tennessee Titans, as well as home to 3HL. This is 104.5 The Zone. Three HL one zero four five. The zone. Brent Doherty with you. Don Davenport is here. Ron Slay is here, and we are rolling through your reaction, our reaction, everybody's, all God's children's reaction. That's right. To the Titans firing Mike Vrabel as head coach. The search is underway. Miss Amy Adams Strunk telling Mike Keith as difficult a decision that she has had to make in this role. There was a process. She said this season was unacceptable. 
Uh, there was consideration to trading him, but he had to be a willing partner. She did not want to get to the back of the line and miss out on someone they might have wanted. My guess is they already have a list of names, and they probably did before all of this went down today, maybe. I, I don't know. But you have to be ready to roll, and she is that kind of person. She's fired three head coaches and two general managers already. Mm-hmm. And and after this Rand Carthon presser that we will take live right here, you can hear it right here, you can hear it on YouTube, all that. It will be here. Um, we'll go through kind of some of the new rules, too, on hiring a head coach yes. and the timeline of it, and it makes sense why Miss Amy made this decision yeah. and didn't wait for a trade partner, right? Can we, yeah, and to throw it out there, to preface this entire situation, this journey we're about to be on, it's going to be steps and stages to this. So if you don't hear an answer today that you're looking for, just know it may be coming. Here is Rand Carthon, Titans general manager, addressing the media now live. The head coach here. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank Vrabes for what he's done here the last uh, six years, uh, particularly the time that we've spent together. Um, you know, I want to thank Jen and Carter and Tyler for their sacrifices um, for allowing him to put in the time that he put in here while here is our head coach. I um, also want to say, you know, I know there's been a lot of speculation over the last, you know, two, three months or whatever it's been about the nature of Mike and I's relationship. I will say that Mike and I, we've never had any issue versus whether it's personal or professional. Uh, we worked well together um, and had a good relationship. Uh, we were in lockstep. Uh, so I want to finally come out and, you know, dispel that. And, uh, you know, I wish Vrabes, you know, nothing but the best. I uh, consider him a friend, and I feel like we'll be that way moving forward. And so with that said, I'll open up for questions. Rand, you said when, when at the draft or when, when you were introduced that your number one thing was to serve Mike. Given, given today's developments, did you fail at that? Uh, I don't think we failed. I just think, um, you know, um, one of the things Mike's always says is that the ball isn't round. So you don't know how it's going to bounce, you know, and I don't think the uh, the ball bounced our way. You know, we were in uh, – we had seven one-score losses um, this year. So we were in games, just the ball didn't bounce our way. I wouldn't consider it a failure, but by no means, you know, were we happy uh, with the results. Um, you know, and that's just something we've talked about, you know, privately and as a group over the last uh, couple months of, you know, how do we get this thing right and how do we get this thing, you know, in the right direction. So I wouldn't call it a failure, you know, but it's definitely not up to the standard. You mentioned, you mentioned, yeah, I, you know, like I said, uh, philosophically, um, like I said back in, uh, in, I think it was my press conference, our, our football foundations are generally the same in where he cut his teeth and how I was raised uh, to see the game of football. Um, you know, realistically, it's only so many ways that you can play the game of football, only so many different schemes. Um, like I said, our, our visions were aligned. You know, we saw it a lot the same, and we worked well together. So I guess what I meant there was, in terms of where the franchise was, rebuild versus, you know, still trying to win another year. Yeah, well, I think that part, you know, it's a, a lot of moving parts you know, to the game of football. Um, and there's no secret, you know, we've dealt with a lot of injuries here, you know, over the last, you know, three seasons or whatever it is. And, you know, we're having to mix and match pieces, you know, on a, on a week-to-week basis. Um, and it, it makes it hard. It makes it hard for, for any organization, you know, to do that. So, uh, you know, we have a lot of work ahead of us of trying to, you know, figure this whole thing out and how we can keep, you know, our key guys out there on the field and keep them available. Um, but it was just one of those things. It wasn't a... Uh, we weren't aligned or it, you know, it didn't work. It's, it's, it's really hard when you take the field, you know, I think we took the field Sunday with nine starters out, you know, and, you know, we were able to come away with a victory. But if you look over the last couple of weeks, look how many starters, you know, that we've had out due to injuries. And it's, it's just hard. It's hard to win football games in the National Football League as is with a healthy roster. It's just it, it becomes even harder you know, when you don't have, you know, all your key guys. Along those, along those lines, Rand, right, along right, those lines. Why Mike Vrabel doesn't have a job today. What, what is the disconnect there? Okay. Well, I think, I think Amy spoke to her decision, you know, of making, uh, you know, of the decision she made and why. Um, and that was about, you know, her long-term vision, you know, of the organization. Um, and, and, and that's really, I think, what it was. You along the lines of all the, uh, you talked about the season and being philosophically aligned and all. But, uh, 
in that regard, a couple of big big moves were made in season. The switch from Tannehill to Levis at quarterback, the firing of Craig Aukerman. Was everybody was that a were those unanimous decisions by the organization at the time? Yes, every every decision that we made was unanimous. Uh, Mike and I we speak every morning. Um, whether it's I come to his office or he comes to my office and we talk about the task in hand for the day. Uh, when we got to the point of um, of making a move uh, from Ryan, um, at that time when we made the, the initial switch, Ryan was injured. And that was about, you know, now we get to see what Levis can do. Um, and Levis went out and he played, he played well. Um, I think had everybody, you know, in this room and our fan base excited about what was to come. And so we decided to make the decision to, you know, move forward and see what that's going to look like in the future and, uh, in his development. Did Amy have a say in those decisions? We consulted with Miss Amy. One thing about Miss Amy is, you know, she hired us to do a job and she allows us to do our job. Introduction. You said that the number one item on your to-do list was collaborating with Mike. How do you feel like you did it, achieving that or not achieving that? Like I said, we we worked well together and we got along, and um, and I feel like our collaboration was fine. Um, and so again, I, whether it's you know, in in that given time when I spoke to. Uh, the press conference and I said I wanted to you know serve Mike you know serve this coaching staff you know that's going to be the philosophy moving forward you know no matter who our next head coach is who our coaching staff is our job and personnel is to serve them and and to and to you know to provide them with players you know that they want to coach and that fit their scheme you know and I think that's the nature of the position the, the general manager position um isn't like what it used to be. You know, I think back in the day, the GM ran the business side. He did everything, you know, and, and this is more uh, the, the philosophies of, of you see these teams that are still playing. They're more in the collaborative, you know, sphere of, of both the head coach and GMs working together. The video, and you said that some consideration at least was given to a trade of Mike Vrabel. Can you elaborate on that? And was he ever directly asked if, if he would be part of a, a trade? Uh, I don't know the nature of his conversations uh, with Miss Amy about, you know, him being traded. Um, I do understand the question about a trade. It's just not as simple um, and cut and dry. And you look over the history is, um, of coaches being traded. It's just not a lot in recent times. And when you say recent times, uh, I know Sean Payton was just traded for, but he was out. You know, and New Orleans had a had a coach in place. Um, but there's also league mandates and rules that you have to follow, you know, before you can execute a trade. And, um, you know, you have to, the partner, uh, if you will, uh, would have have to go through an exhaustive uh, process and meet the Rooney rules and all those qualifications. Um, and before we could even start interviewing, we have to have an opening. And so it just prolongs our ability to get the next and best head coach in here. What's the, process, the what's, what's the process going to be like in hiring a new coach and who all who will be involved in that? So we're going to, you know, hit the ground running. Um, you know, obviously this is um, – I'll give you a little, you know, just to go back a little bit. You know, um, I just finished meeting with um, our operations staff, our support staff. Uh, I met with each uh, assistant coach individually. I uh, didn't want to do one big fail swoop of, you know, talking to those guys. I want to give those guys indiv uh, individualized attention. And so that way they can ask questions that they might want to ask about themselves specifically. So I uh, made sure I made the time to go around and, uh, in, and talk with each one of those guys. Uh, but we're going to run an exhaustive process, uh, process uh, to find our next head coach. Um, and it's going to involve, you know, a lot of people. Um, you know, I, obviously I'll be a part of that. You know, Miss Amy will be a part of that and others. Um, you know, but we want to, you know, make sure that we're getting the right people in here. You know, I, I think it's it's going to be well documented. And I know you guys will, you know, do your due diligence and, you know, let us know what you think of every candidate, you know, that comes out. Um, but we also have to make sure that we're getting the right people in here, you know, and people that everyone in this building, you know, wants to come in and work for. You know, collaboration, how did your collaboration determine that the group of offensive linemen that were on this team this year was sufficient to protect the quarterback and to create a run game? No, I was, a you know, obviously, a, you know, one of the voices of it, you know, and I know that's an area where, um, you know, we didn't play as well um, and we, we need to continue to um, look for ways to improve that, and we will, um, and that'll be, you know, a part of the process as well. Um, 
But one thing I will say, um, you know, about that offensive line position, offensive line position isn't always about the individual. It's about the sum of the parts. Um, and we had a lot of injuries there. That was one of the positions that we had a lot of injuries. And so bringing guys, moving guys around, you know, guys like Dylan Radins playing guard, playing tackle, moving guys around, we, you know, it's just we weren't able to create that cohesion you know amongst the group if you look at some of those great offensive lines back in the day the you know the Denver Broncos line back in the you know in the late 90s and you know the uh, the hogs um, in Washington those guys had cohesion those guys worked well you know together and we just weren't able to keep the same five guys on the field consistently so you, think the group, the, uh... you think the group was good enough if, if it was healthy I think the group uh, could have played better if it was healthy um, and, and played together. Again, we know we're going to always look to add, you know, competition. And, you know, trust me, we didn't go into it feeling settled at any position. We're always looking to add. And, you know, throughout the summer, we were able to add other pieces and work out players. Some guys we weren't able to agree to terms with that probably could have helped us. Right. But through that, we, uh, you know, we were able to, you know, find a, a Chris Hubbard and guys like that. So, you know, the name of the game in this business is keeping a quarterback upright. And we didn't do – one second. And we didn't do a good enough job of doing that. And and I definitely had a, a part in that. And so that would be one of our top tasks. Sorry. And what are the two or three characteristics that you're going to look for in the next head coach? Um, in all fairness, I don't want to, you know, go into that uh, right now specifically. Uh, I promise you, um, you know, at a given time when we're, you know, up here, um, you know, introducing the next head coach I'll, I'll go into that but I think right now is best for us to keep that tight you know what I mean amongst ourselves um, as we go through our process when is it so to make sure that you are getting a coach that is going to be able to work with what seems to be the future of your franchise and quarterback Will Levis to make sure that that is right more than anything if this is the guy you're moving forward with as, as your quarterback so um I mean, all, I think all positions are important, and I get the you know the nature of the quarterback position and what it means to not only our franchise but to the league as well. Um, you know, I, sh I share with you guys, um, you know, before Levis's first start, and I became like a mantra, you know, for me um, to tell him, you know, I told him you you don't have to be number one, you just have to be number uh, one of eleven, you know, and so we're not going to you know make our whole search about you know, Will Levis, you know, we have other guys on this team um, that are going to require coaching, they're going to require development. Um, but, you know, we will bring someone in here that's, you know, sees it the same way and, be, and is more than willing to work with him. It sounds, like we, it sounds like you were not in the present in the room when Amy talked to Coach Rabel this morning of his firing. How much is that true? And how much say did you have in the final decision to part ways with Coach Rabel? Uh, no, I was not in the room. Um, uh, when the when the news was delivered, um, and these these things are ultimately you know Miss Amy's uh, decisions. Um, I think um, organizationally structured, we both report to her, um, and you know I know they've always had their you know their one on one conversations as I have you know with her throughout the year and just throughout you know my time being here. Uh, so no, uh, I wasn't present, um, but that's just the way it is. Well, did, you, did, you get, did you have any input at all, and what's your understanding of why Mike was fired? Well, um, like Ms. Amy said in her statement, it's about her long-term vision, you know, of what she wants uh, the organization to be um, and how she wants to move this organization, you know, forward. How did it work for, for nobody to have final say? It worked fine uh, because, again, I, I think we've talked about this before, um, you know, with this group. You know, I, I see that as an as a ego uh, driven part, you know, that can create dissension. And, you know, that's the his guy, my guy, you know, type of conversation. But again, there was never going to be a player brought in here that we weren't in agreement with. Was it, part, was it part of your agreement in the collaboration that Mike would face the music on everything difficult through the season and that you would be as invisible as you were? No, um, I think, well, to your point, because I, I know where we want to go with this. Um, I was out front from the moment I got hired through the spring, um, you know, throughout that whole process. And I just felt like whether right or wrong, you know, and it's something for me to learn from as we move forward. Um, I just felt like the, the fall should have been about, you know, the players and the coaches. Now, in terms of when it came to the, the KB trade and why I was not out front on that, you know, um, Mike's had the relationship, you know, with Kevin over the last, you know, six years or whatever it, uh, it's been. Um, and we felt like it was best for him you know, to uh, to go out front and handle that. How 
said. By out front, you, you, I mean, you had a few press conferences. What, what's, what's out front? When you, when you say I had a few press conferences, are we talking in the spring or the fall? Spring and, and the fall. No, I, well, I was out front in the spring because that's, you know, that's roster acquisition time. Um, I don't particularly remember doing a press conference in the, um, in the fall, um, but uh, maybe I did one or two. At, yeah, I mean, you know, again, Paul, this is, uh, you know, my first year on the job and I've had, you know, thoughts and processes that I thought would work best, you know, moving forward. And I'm not here to say, again, like I said, it may not be right or wrong. And it's something that I need to evaluate, you know, moving forward and do a better job of connecting, of connecting with the fan base. Amy said in the video that she will name who has final say when the, when the process is over. So is your understanding then that this is changing? This yeah, time? I mean, again, it, it, again, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a thing where, you know, it's it's an ego thing, you know what I mean, from my standpoint of saying I have to have it. It's whatever's best for this organization, you know, and we're going to do that. And no matter if, if, if she says that I have final say, it'll be in a collaborative effort, you know, with the head coach. Like I, I firmly believe and I'll never deviate from it. We're not going to bring players in here that the coaches don't want to coach, you know. Oh, no, go ahead. You got it. A moment ago, you said the reason primarily he was fired was because of the vision that Miss Amy sees for this team. What was it about Mike that wasn't compatible with that vision? It's her vision for the for the organization, not the team. The vision for her organization and how she wants things structured uh, for that. Like I said, Miss Amy, uh, she's made her statement um, and she's clarified her reasons and we're here to support her. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, start it one more time. You, you mentioned how nobody's happy with the outcome of this season. How much blame do you put on yourself for a 6-11 season? I mean, I, obviously I'm, I'm one of the pieces in the talent acquisition part, you know, so I, I wholeheartedly take a lot of the blame, you know, and I have no problems with that. Again, um, I've, I've been a part of losing seasons, you know, throughout my career, um, but I've been a part of some, you know, some really uh, – big winning seasons specifically these last couple of years and and so that's not a part of my nature i don't accept losing um you know you have the you know the piece out there well hey if you continue to lose you get a higher draft position i don't give a damn about a draft position i'm here to win football games and that's what i ultimately be judged on well you know again we have um we have to go through uh, league protocols um, and mandates um, that we have to meet um, as the people who will be new to the, the hiring process, um, you know, from a DEI perspective that we have to go through. Uh, so once we, you know, um, handle that part of the business, we'll, we'll get him started immediately um, in terms of who we want to uh, sit down with and, uh, again, start immediately. What's your intention that they might make a change, Ray? Um, I mean, you, you can speculate. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, again, Mike and I, we had, you know, private conversations yesterday um, as we met with players, you know, as we met with the players in one on one. Um, but, you know, I mean, you guys do a good job of keeping everybody informed. You know what I mean? And so it's something that you have to when you see it, you know, you have to give it a thought about what it is. And, you know, again, it's, it's unfortunate that um, we're sitting here today you know, having that conversation. Uh, I'll be honest with you, man. It's, uh, you know, going down and meeting with the uh, with the coaches one-on-one, you know, individually. Um, some of these guys that, you know, they're, they're damn good ball coaches, and we're having this conversation under this, you know, under these circumstances. It's not easy. Um, again, like I said, I um, after I face you guys' questions, I have to go home and answer questions. You know, um, some of you guys have seen my kids around. Um, you know, my, my daughter had a close relationship with Mike, you know, so I got to go home and answer these questions as well. So these days are never easy. Did Mike want more control in, in the process or at least a different structure set up? We never had those conversations um, because uh, Mike was a part of every – every meeting that we ever had in terms of uh, talent acquisition. Uh, the way we did things last year from the moment I came in, we had a free agency meeting with the scouts, um, and we were all in there. We had a meeting with the coaches. We were all in there, same thing for the draft process. So, again, no player came through here that our coaches did not see. How much of your talent acquisition? That, I, I, it's, it's football. You know, it's football, and it's, you know, it's – 74 car crashes you know a day um right and 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 paul that's a part that that we have to figure out 
we we really do, and we have to spend the time to figure it out. Uh, Todd Torricelli and his his uh, staff, you know, they do an excellent job of getting these guys back as soon as possible. Um, and that is that is something is because it's something that's persisted over the last three years, and so we have to you know pay attention to that, and we will do that as we go through this process, you know, with the next head coach. Staff members or coaches be retained. How do you go through that process of? you know, maybe bringing anybody back? So, um, like I spoke with uh, the coaches today, um, m my plan is to present our coaching staff, you know, to the next head coach and give him the, you know, the ability to um, interview any of the, the guys on our current staff if he, you know, if he sees so, um, and go from there. If he needs, you know, advice or input from myself and from anyone here, we will do that. Um, but I have, you know, a ton of respect for those guys. And, you know, I kind of let you guys in on, you know, the nature of my conversation with them. Um, you know, I let every coach know I appreciated the work that they put in, the work that they put in developing our guys, um, and that I wouldn't stand in the way if between now and the time we hire the next head coach if an opportunity came for them, you know, to continue to feed their family. Um, you know, again, would love for the next head coach to consider some of the guys because we have some talented guys on this staff, uh, but that'll be, you know, at the discretion of the next head coach. How much of the talent acquisition process that you and Mike did together last offseason was rooted in a multi-year vision? And with Mike no longer being a part of that process, how much does it pivot how your roster internally looks moving forward. Yeah, I mean, you always, when you're acquiring specifically younger guys, you know, draft guys and some young free agents, it's a long-term vision. You know, we, we talk a lot about it in the draft room of, hey, this guy may not be ready year one. You know, so that's a part of it. Um, and depending on the scheme of the next head coach, things could pivot you know, drastically, and we could have a, a retool of the roster, which is, you know, going to take some work. And so, uh, you know, we'll address that, you know, when we get there. Was the expectation coming into the season, knowing what you had on the roster, to contend for a division, or was there an expectation that it may take some time to do the full turnover that you guys No, the, the, the expectation, no matter when you put guys out there on the field, is to win the ball game, you know, no, no matter what. And, and that was our vision. Um, and so, you know, obviously it, it did not go that way um, for a variety of reasons, but the, the, the goal is to always win. You know, um, I think, you know, I know Mike's been a part of some championship teams and we know what that looks like and I have as well. Um, but, you know, we're going to moving forward, you know, we're going to we're going to work diligently to make sure um, that, you know, we, we're going to put the best product out there on the field. You talk you about collaboration, Ryan. Isn't it important ultimately to have somebody have the final say on, on things like the 53 man? Again, I don't think, you know, I understand that and I, I can see where it, where it works. But again, we all have to be aligned, you know, on that. It's it's my job. It's Chad's job. It's A-Rob's job. It's all of our directors and scouting's job to identify the players that fit whatever it is we do schematically and then present that to the coaches. And the coaches have to, you know, want to coach this guy. Um, and so um, it's no matter who has the final say, you know, it's going to have to be – you know, a collection of talent that makes that work. You know, um, when it comes down to there's a difference, you know, there's a difference of having 53-man control versus 48-man control on game day, you know, um, and those are two totally different things. And so, you know, the coaches know what they need, you know, to execute their game plan on game day. Why were you drafted an All-America left tackle? Did the organization never look at him at left tackle as you struggled at left tackle? Well, I think the the goal for Peter was to be the left guard and, um, you know, and, and moving him around from moving him from a new position to a position that he hadn't practiced. I don't think it was advantageous in his development um, and his growth because he was learning a new position, um, you know, and from him. He yes, he came in. He was an All-American, um, you know, left tackle um, in college, you know, but I think and we talked about this with Peter the other day, you know, um, you know, at this league, there are bigger, longer players, and you know the length presents a problem. Now, moving forward, it you know, who knows? We may we may give Peter a look. Peter is a player that I would never bet against and say that he couldn't do something or he couldn't play. Uh, but we thought at the you know at the time when we drafted him that Peter we could put Peter at guard and he'll be a mainstay. There was never a time along the way while Tannehill and and Levis were getting hurt that that it made sense to take a look at him there, given the alternative. We discussed it. We discussed it, but moving Peter to left guard will have to put somebody at left tackle. I mean, uh, um, moving Peter to left tackle will have to put somebody at left guard, and then now we're going back to that part about the cohesion. It was easier to replace one guy versus two. 
you know, you know, you know, you know, term vision. Do you feel like that's your vision? It's ours. You know, I'm. I don't. I don't own this organization. You know, and we all have someone that that we have to answer to, and you know, we present our plan. You know, to uh, to Miss Amy and let her know. You know how we want to move forward, um, and and that's the way it's going to be. She talked about you talked about it, but no one's actually defined what it is. I think I think at the at the right moment we'll define that we'll define that vision, and that's going to come when we hire our next head coach, and we'll be able to give you give you guys more of a detailed description at that time. Might not fit the vision today. Well, again, um, this was about Miss Amy's long-term of, uh, vision, and she stated in her statement how she felt. Well, you mentioned the team's playing now have a certain way of going about things. How does how does that way, as you understand it, compare to how you guys did things this year and what it will look like moving forward? I'm not following the question. The teams that are playing, that are still playing, have that sort of collaborative mm -hmm. – way of going about things behind the scenes, right? And right. That's what you yeah. Said. So how does that, your understanding of what they do, mm -hmm. and I know you know one very well, compared to what you guys did this year and what you want to do from here? No, I think, you know, again, we, we're talking – you know, different circumstances, uh, just in terms of, you know, a lot of those teams that are that are still playing, they, they've remained relatively healthy at key positions. Um, and we just weren't able to do that. Um, but again, moving forward, you know, we got to we got to diagnose whatever that reason is and why, you know, we haven't been able to keep, you know, the same 11 guys out there consistently. Are you, with leading, that? Are, are you going to be leading the, the head coaching search? And if not, how is it going to work? I know we, you know, um, talked about this earlier you know I will be one of the parts of it um, and there will be you know areas in which you know I'll take more of an out front approach um, but again this isn't this is about the head coach this is about the locker room but this is about the organization so it'll be you know a few of us in there um, I know there are a couple candidates that you know I have um, you know out there that'll be available I have relationships with and I want to be able to run an unbiased um you know, uh, process. And so that that's going to require more people to be, you know, in the room and a part of the process. In terms of teams that, that are still playing, a lot of them have more wide open, more dynamic offenses built around the quarterback. Is that a direction that you uh, would potentially like to go? You know, I mean, we'll, we'll see what the candidate um, pool list, you know, presents. Um, you know, obviously the that's what everyone tunes in to see is, you know, points being scored and, and big plays. And so we want to be a well-balanced football team, you know, um, as we move forward. So um, however we get there is how we get there. If there's, a candidate you recommend, the right? if there's a candidate you recommend, do you expect Amy to accept the recommendation? Um, yeah, I mean, again, it's, it's a vote, right? So we're going to – how many other people we decide to interview, we're going to interview. And I'm sure, you know, when it comes down to it, everyone will speak their piece about, you know, who they like, and I'm, you know, we're all going to listen to each other and, f and figure out who's best for us. You'll be taking part in the coaching search, and you could have final roster say, what makes you feel prepared to take on that larger role? You know, I was thinking about this, you know, as we, you know, move forward. Of course, I've never had to run a run or be a part of an interview search or interview a head coach. That's, I've never done it, you know, but then I lean on my experiences in growing up, you know, in a household raised by a coach. You know, and a lot of the coaches that I've been around, I've, you know, reached out to, you know, some of my, you know, friends around the league. Some are head coaches, some are GMs, you know, for advice, you know, already. Um, and so I'll lean on those, you know, those guys to help me in, in areas where I'm not experienced. What did you think about the degree of player development you saw over the season you were here? Um, I'm encouraged. You know, from, you know, you look at guys, um, you look at, I mean, Peter, like we talked about before, he's never played guard before. He stepped in and he was playing good ball. And even myself, you know, I forget that he missed a significant portion, you know, due to an appendectomy, you know, where he lost significant weight and he, you know, worked his tail off to get back, you know, to do that. So he was still kind of developing and growing. Um, you look at Will Levis, you look at, you know, I, Josh Wiley, I have to call him, by his real name and not the nickname we gave him. But, you know, all these guys, you know, showed improvement. Look at Colton Dow, you know, for him to come in, you know, as a seventh-round pick at receiver and, and earn a spot, you know, on um, on special teams. And Jalen Duncan, you know, and where he was, like, the, the development was very encouraging. We just have to keep that going. One thing that Mike Vrabel established here that really has been here since, you know, through ups and downs is the culture of that locker room. How big is it for you to focus on 
I know it's hard just to predict a coach maybe that for the first time that's coming in, but how big is that on your mind in terms of who you bring in to be able to establish a solid culture through ups and downs? Because it's going to happen. Oh, it's going to be key. You know, it's going to be key, and, and, and we need that you know, at that voice, you know, out of that position. Um, but it also takes the guys in the locker room. So we're going to have to continue to bring the right guys in the locker room. I think we have the right guys, you know, in the locker room and how they respond to things. And, you know, when everybody counted us out, you know, those guys go out there and fight. Um, you know, I think we were without, what, seven starters on defense, you know, the other day and, you know, was able to, you know, hold one of the one of the better and more talented offenses, you know, to uh, 20 points. So, um you know, along with the head coach, we got to continue to uh, keep those type of guys in the locker room. I mean, Derek, Derek kind of approached Sunday as if it was his last game here. Is there a scenario where you maybe try to pursue him, or is that depend on maybe who the new head coach is? Yeah, well? that'll be a that'll be a, a new head coach, the new head coach, and, and I, you know, having a conversation. Um, I had a really good conversation uh, with Derek yesterday. You know, on the way out, and. Um, you know, we had our conversation, which I'll keep between him and I, but, you know, the, the doors never close. Just to clarify, you said that you guys are going to define the vision once you get the new head coach in place. Do you think it's important to have, between you and Amy, that vision defined going into the coaching search, or are you trying to define that vision based on who you hire? No, we have the division defined. We, we have it defined, and we've had, you know – you know, I've been on the phone ever since, you know, the decision was made and it's it's obviously been a lot going on and it's been hectic, but the the vision is defined. It's just it'll be a time for us to roll that out. Can you share that vision? No, it's it's, it's 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 not the time. It's not the time to to share that vision today. And, and I because I think as we go through this process, we need to to make sure that we have the right person aligned with that and and why we hired that person will fit that vision. Okay. Um, how do you balance? Sorry. How do you balance knowing the free agents and stuff you got to deal with the players and how this coaches? How do you how do you make all that work at the same time? Uh, sleepless nights. Um, I have to you know go by the target and get a pillow and a blanket and uh, sleep in my office and do whatever I need to do to do my part to help you know usher this organization forward. You know. Why is the scouting staff that was below John Robinson and led helped in part lead to the roster problems that you have now, the right scouting staff to help you rebuild the roster? Well, you know, again, with everything, with this, with this change, we got to continue to look at, you know, at our scouting staff and what changes may or may not need to be made there. Uh, one thing when I was hired, um, I didn't know any of these guys when I came in and I wanted to give them a chance to prove themselves because I have never worked with them and I didn't want to just come in and just gut the place and, and have to start over and do all of that. And so uh, we'll continue to, you know, um, evaluate all phases of the organization. Like we have to, we have to get it right. And I, I, I'm confident that we will. With relationship building with the new head coach that you're going to want to do differently than you did with Mike or the regrets, I guess, that, that you want to address? No, I don't have any regrets. Um, I think relationship building is all about you as an individual and how you do those. And, you know, I, I feel like with who I am as a person, like I, my life has been built on relationships and my, my ability to uh, create and establish relationships with people. So um, I will continue with the same approach you know, that I've always had. And I'm, I'm the type of person that, you know, we're going to, we're going to have conversations. Sometimes are going to be uncomfortable, but you know, but the best way to get on the other side is maybe having a 20 or 30 minute uncomfortable conversation. So, um, I'm never going to put myself above anybody. I'm gonna always make myself available, you know, to who, uh, whoever that next person is. But, um, in terms of how I communicate and how I go about my life, I'm, I'm not changing that. Thanks for your time. Thank you. All right, there he is, Titans General Manager Rand Carthon. Uh, we'll have plenty of time for you to react. 3HL on live today, as every day, till 6 o'clock. More 3HL next on 104.5 The Zone.
Hey, great news for you out there, and it's called Loan Pronto, and it's called mortgage rates that have come down a lot in the past couple of months. Loan Pronto helping you take advantage of fixed rates with APRs in the fives. Yes, maybe you got stuck with that crappy mortgage rate last year. Loan Pronto can help you switch it out for a much better payment right now. They do it fast, and they do it with no appraisal and no closing cost. Roger Moore, the owner, the founder of Loan Pronto, started it because he felt like there needed to be an easier way. So you're not buried in the paperwork. So you can start the whole process on LoanPronto.com. More of a quicker process. He simplified it. And the best part is their ability to get the consumer the lowest rate. All electronic, all digital, no extra fees. Loan Pronto can help you out. LoanPronto.com. I did it. I started the whole process there, which made my life easier because I could do it on my own time schedule. And then you can also just give them a call and they make it simple for you. Loan Pronto at 615-499-5780. That's 615-499-5780. Loan Pronto, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval. What's happening, good people? Ron Slay here, man. Let's go get our um, health in order, people. Like, let's get a little push for it, a little jolt, if you will. Low T Center can make it a great one in 2024. If you've been feeling a little tired, grumpy, notice lack of motivation and drive, got weight gain and loss of muscle mass, these could all be signs of low testosterone levels. At Low T Center, they make it easy. Make it happen. All you got to do is go hit them up. LowTCenter.com. Book your appointment online today. That's LowTCenter.com. Low T Center, reinventing men's health care.
Three HL one zero four five. The Zone. Brent Doherty, Don Davenport, Ron Slay with you. Mike Vrabel fired as Titans head coach. Amy Adams Strunk uh, talked with Mike Keith earlier today. We played that for you. We'll probably play that again in the five o'clock hour. It's about five minutes long, where she answers all of. Um, I, I think I think Mike did a great job asking her the pertinent question. He did vote like things. With he did. Interview. And then Rand Carthon just went for about thirty minutes, and we played that entire thing. For you, Um, he said, uh, we never had any issue. Him and uh, Vrabel, we were in lockstep is what he said. He said our collaboration was fine, which got a little eye roll from you. I I dropped the eye roll on that one. (laughs) I don't believe that. But, you know, props to him for taking the high road. If the collaboration, the communication, and everybody was on the same page and everything was fine, then Mike Vrabel wouldn't be fired. He said, That's uh, it's, my take. Yep, it's a fair take. He, he said it's an exhaustive process. Um, it will be an exhaustive process to find the next head coach. We want to make sure we get the right people in here. He wants to run an unbiased search, so there will be a lot of people involved that he bounces things off of. Um, what did I say about the word fine? Do you remember when he said our collaboration was fine? I said, yeah, listen, as a wife, let me tell you what fine means. Yeah. Hey, mm-hmm. is everything okay? It's fine. Yeah. By the way, see that <laughs> couch over there? It looks comfortable, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. It'll be, You'll be fine, fine on that couch yeah. tonight. Rand said he slept in his office, as a matter of <laughs> fact. Uh, he was not in the room when the news was delivered to Vrabel. Uh, interesting, um, one of the things that Amy Adams Strunk said, that she said that after the process, she will identify who reports to who. So Rand today said we both reported to her. Yep. So that was a situation, again, where Vrabel did not report to the general manager. Mm-hmm. He reported to the big boss lady. Yep. Uh, I don't give a damn about a draft position. I'm here to win games. I love that quote. Yes, indeed. Uh, doors never closed with regard to Derrick Henry, but mm-hmm. obviously they need to get a head coach, see what the uh, vision for the offense looks like there, and then uh, go from there. More 3HL. When we come back, more of your reaction, more of our reaction. Rand Carthon addressing the media. Amy Adams Strunk talking with Mike Keith earlier. The head coach, Mike Vrabel, is gone. 3HL 1045 The Zone. What is happening, good people? You're losing your hair. You need a simple solution that works. You want the best of modern technology with top-rated physicians. You want something that's guaranteed to work? Guys, you need advanced hair. Advanced hair has completely redefined hair restoration from the experience itself to the unmatched results they produce. Receding hairline, bald spot, thinning hair. Address the them all with a simple one-day treatment in a calm, relaxed environment with the most experienced professionals. Advanced Hair has performed tens of thousands of breakthrough and advanced FUE treatments. That's right. And get this, your own natural hair begins to regrow the very next day. No one else in Nashville can offer the advanced FUE found at Advanced Hair. Fix hair loss today, starting with your free consultation, and you'll also get $500 off if you move forward, call 629-348-HAIR. Refine your hairline with the team that's redefined hair restoration. Don't forget, ask about that advanced hair guarantee. You might get that $500. 629-348-HAIR or advancehair.com.
Three HL one zero four five the zone. The entire five o'clock hour, we're going to talk through this. Get your reaction. Mike Vrabel gone as head coach of the Tennessee Titans. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. By the way, real quick side note: it's blustery outside. We just went out blustery. to the Lanai. Davenport and I did. It's windy. And she opened the door, and we just got, I mean, just knocked over with like a 30-mile-an-hour wind gust. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Sunday, high of 38, low of 15, 54% chance of snow. Monday, 24 degrees is the high, 4 degrees is the low. <laughs> You're Tuesday, ready for it. Tuesday, high of 20, Oops. low of 6. <laughs> and, and there is uh, the potential for... Um, white stuff. White stuff, yes. What's poetic about this is directly over Brent's shoulders, a nice view of that hotel that I'll probably be staying in for the next three days. That is Yeah, great. one to three yeah. inches on Sunday night is what it says right now, and then a chance of snow Monday morning as well. It all changes. The kids will love it. Earlier today, they had it at minus one, the low for Monday, so four is not bad. <laughs> I always said, like, if you're talking about temperature and you're into single, like, one syllable, that's a that's a tough place to be. No, nah, that's not that's not really Earth. <laughs> that's yeah. somewhere else. Uh, One that was syllable a tough, ten- temperatures. Yes, that was a tough place for Rand Carthon to be too. It was, but he handled himself well. I mean, he, he took did. the high road, and he actually gave you some stuff. And You're and here we go. The lines. <laughs> and I I liked it when he joked about like uh, you know I'm sure we're gonna get all y'all's opinions about every head coaching. Po- uh, potential interview that you guys throw out there, and that I can't wait to see real. that and all we'll of those. Things. We'll be listening. Oh, he said the will assistants say- will interview with the new coach if that's what the new coach wants. So yeah. there you go on that. I don't know about you guys. I don't ever want to hear the word collaborate ever again. <laughs> yeah, but everybody's just clinging to it. I don't think it's ever going away. Ugh, it needs to go away. There needs to be collaboration, but there also needs to be clearly identified lines of of direction who reports to who well Rand said we both me and mike vrabel we both reported to amy yep coach did not report to the gm Correct. um my guess is they will set up a different situation moving forward uh-huh. and that's part of why we are here because you couldn't do that now like i mean if you're amy out of strong you're like all of a sudden like oh hey Vrabes, you're reporting to him now right right it's hard to make that switch yeah. especially if they're not on the same page and Rand Carthen can sit and say that they were aligned, or well, he didn't say aligned, but that they were on the same page, and that you know our collaboration was fine. Was right, was fine. Yeah. He can say that all he wants. He's, I definitely think he's taking the high road there, and there's obviously some uh, some areas that it wasn't. By the way, uh, which you with, would expect with regard to like me talking about control and all those things that that Vrabel had. Nate Washington outlined it so much more eloquently than I did. And more beautifully than I did. And you're going to read his uh, tweet when we come back. And I think it's uh, I think it's on point. And we'll see what you guys think uh, as well. Your reaction, Mike Vrabel, fired as head coach of the Tennessee Titans. This is 3HL 104.5 The Zone. What's happening? The people Ron Slay here, man. Let's get Kellum Stem Cell institute.com right there on your radar. How will you do it? You listen to me and I'm going to get you right there because I'm going to tell you my testimony with them. Yes, knee was hurting. All kinds of things were hurting. Let's start with the knee though. The knee was hurting. I go in and I try to figure out just exactly how this all works. How does holistic stem cell therapy work? Well, it started with a consultation. You can get yours today at 615-850-4415. Went in, sat down with Dr. Kellum, went over all of the myths I heard about holistic stem cell therapy. He told me exactly what it is, how it works, what it attacks, what I need to know. Sat there for a minute, got my thoughts together. Thought, could I ask anything else? He came back in the room and asked even more questions. Then we just talked in general about, you know, Things that you could have changed when you were younger, wouldn't you love to use this? Most definitely I would have. Yes, my own body cells helping me, yes, I would have loved for that to be my solution. And here's the bonus. Those cells, those body stem cells that are are extracted, they are stored for later use. You need to get on to it, man. My knee started, stopped hurting immediately. Going to get rock, locked, uh, locked in for KellumStemCellInstitute.com.
Good evening from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. I'm Joe Hunk. Rand Carthon just met with the media just a little while ago, and one question he got asked was about him and Coach Vrabel, if they saw eye-to-eye and had the same philosophy. Philosophically, um, like I said back in, uh, in, I think it was my press conference, our, our football foundations are generally the same in where he cut his teeth and how I was raised uh, to see the game of football. You know, realistically, it's only so many ways that you can play the game of football, only so many different schemes. Like I said, our, our visions were aligned. You know, we saw it a lot the same, and we worked well together. Coming up tonight here on 104.5 The Zone, you have Franklin traveling to Nolensville. You'll be able to hear that game pregame. Begins at 7.15 with the tip-off of the game at 7.30 here on 104.5 The Zone. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, you need to visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Vols, the flagship station for your Tennessee Titans, as well as home to 3HL. This is 104.5 The Zone. Three HL one zero four five the zone. What up? Hope you're having a great day. The news of the day, obviously, Mike Vrabel out as Tennessee Titans head coach. We've got your reaction right here on Three HL one zero four five the zone. Guess who else is here? Don Davenport. Hi. What up, Let's go. Wow, crazy day. It is a crazy day, and we're going to roll through it with you. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. Big sleigh dogs over here. I'm in the building. I'm in the building. Let's go. I got a new coach. I'm in the building. I'm in the building. Okay. I'm, in the building. I'm in the build. I'm in the build. Uh, Gonna be on the SEC network tomorrow. This is true, y'all. Throwing that 3HL sticker out there to the world. It would be nah, right. Nah, they're about to give him his own laptop, so we'll stop <laughs> doing that. <laughs> boom boom room out there. It was out there. It was out there live and well. You need to get Mike Vrabel in the boom boom room. See what he'd say. Yeah, I do need to. Vray. Give him a little bit. I bet he'll come on in. I'm All sure right. he'll be I'm, on I'm Bussing so, with the Boys I'm at so some point. Him, yeah. Figure That's, out where his next job is first because we, we he'll were, be coaching next year. We were talking about that during the break earlier. So, Rand Carthon has spoken. Amy Adams St- Strunk has spoken. Will Mike Vrabel speak? Because I think that would be really interesting to hear his side of what transpired. Mm-hmm. And so, we immediately thought, okay, if Mike Vrabel, if somebody gets Mike Vrabel, it's gonna. It's got to be Taylor Lewan and Will Conte, right? No it's got to be doubt. buzzing yeah. with the boys. There's no I question. Mean, the guys that he told he would cut his member off to win a mm-hmm. Super Bowl mm-hmm. for, like, yep. of course he's gonna go interview with them. I yeah, forgot I, I, yeah. about that. <laughs> How can you forget about <laughs> yep. that? Yes, sir. Oh well, so much for that. Nice, right? <laughs> he would. Um, he, if it wasn't him, I would think somebody like McAfee would get him. Right. Because McAfee always big him up on this show. McAfee too. will pay him too. That's the other part. Might as well. Paying Aaron Rodgers and Nick Saban a lot <laughs> of money for their mm-hmm. season appearances. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have gone on and on about our opinions about this. You want to go to the people? Let's, Let's hear it the from people. the people. Let's go up to Hoptown, Kentucky. Kevin and Hopkinsville. Next up on 3 hey, Kevin, what do you think, stuff. man? What up, Kill? Not much. I think that was one of the dumbest things the Titans could do. I'm just going to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why. Okay. I'm going to tell you why. So, um, how many division titles did Mike Vrabel bring to uh, Nashville? What, two or three? Two. 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 No, he won two in a row. Uh, yeah. Then the okay. Titans had how never done wins? that before. Yeah. Winning seasons, we've had a few. He brought some respectability back to the franchise. He's not the one out there blocking. He's not the one out there tackling. You know, overall, I think the teams that he's put on the field have been pretty good. It's just this was a down year. Yeah, I, I think it has a lot more to do with other things other than that. Although she did point to yeah. this year was a – an what did she say? Well, last year, too. Unacceptable. Year unacceptable. Year. Last two seasons were unacceptable. Yeah, mm-hmm. and because I, I think we all can agree that he is a good football coach, right? Yeah, yeah. But I think it has more to do – Kevin, thank you, man. Um, I think it has more to do with other things. Like, this is an opportunity for her to reset the structure of the franchise. You heard the GM, Rand Carthon, if you listen to that, uh, where he said they both reported to Amy Adams Strunk. Mm. And I think they, they want to set up a more traditional system where the coach reports to the general manager, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I don't mean – like, that doesn't mean he's a bad coach, but it didn't it, – it wasn't working. How long – how long do people – how long – that's what I want to know. When fans call in, listeners call in, how long did you want this to go on? 
Right. Well, you'll be at the end of the season. Guess who's seven in a row? Everybody bitching about the offense. Mm. Guess who hired the offensive coaches? So Mike Vrabel. To that point, mm. what Nate Washington tweeted a, a little while ago. I love this. Former wide receiver for the Titans. If you don't know Nate Washington, this is what um, I was trying to say. Yes, and and I'm just and too dumb said, to do he, it. He said like, it a little more eloquently. <laughs> yes, he did. He said, "My opinion in regards to Vrabel, and this ties into what Kevin just said, and in everything we're talking about. My opinion. This is Nate Washington, former wide receiver. I think he's a great head coach. Unfortunately, didn't have the offensive staff to support his journey." Giving guys and friends opportunity doesn't always pan out the way you'd hope. I think if he had a better offensive staff, we wouldn't be here. So when you talk about control, that's kind of what I was talking about right there. Right. You surround yourself with people that you can control. And guess what? It's it's okay. You give people opportunities, great job. Sometimes it works out, but when it doesn't, it, it, you got to move on. And you got to accept it. You're the guy. You're the guy. It's that simple. 615-737-1045. Well done, Nate Washington, legend of the game. Good job, Nate. He did a great and job they won. Did, and he did a great job out there. And they won. Yeah, and they won. Did you get over there in time? To see Nate Washington? Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes you kind of straggle yourself away. No, this was in the beginning. You know they bring the legend on in the fourth quarter. Oh, okay. I haven't mm-hmm. been to the game over there no, this it's year. Usually yeah. the, because like, I have to Titans work fan after. of the game or something in the yeah. beginning, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's the beginning, the fan of the game, yeah. He's a legend of the game. You've never been fried for the uh, fan of the game, then? Yeah, I am, I'm fried, but I'm not even in the stadium. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love you, Slay Dog. Nah, I love you, too, bro. Alex and Franklin. Alex, what's up? <laughs> hey, guys. What up, well, Alex? I think G-Money kind of hit a lot of the points I wanted to hit. Um, you know, looking at um, – you know, the rest of the football community, everybody is just scratching their head. I mean, they understand, you know, the lack of offensive linemen that we, you know, acquired and that just didn't do the job for the last two years. Uh, and I was glad to hear, you know, our general manager take some of that, uh, take some of that blame. But, you know, bottom line is, we didn't have an offense that, you know, could score. Um, And, uh, you know, is that, is that all on Braves? No. Um, But since he's the head coach, he's, he's going to take that hit. Um, I also think that. Right. But I mean, he surrounded himself with those coaches on offense. He also has the headset and does have communication with the offensive coordinator in terms of what is being called. Also, and, well, and also one, one some of that point. was on John Robinson, and she fired John Robinson too. I mean, now they're both yeah. gone. One, so, right. you, you know, um, yeah. One, one, one last point. Okay. Um, just, uh, just, you know, I, I get the feeling like we try to do things on the cheap, and uh, going all the way back to our new stadium that's going to be what sixty two thousand. You know, it's going to be the smallest covered stadium in the NFL. I mean, we have got to be able to spend some money to get better. I'm sorry. It's just. What? You know. Wait, how do, but how does having a smaller stadium have anything to do with it? That's wait, the direction wait, wait, all of them are going in. They're all going that way. Yeah. More of a bo- boutique style of stadium. Everybody's doing that. Yeah. And they're spending. What well, do they spend may, on that thing? Yeah. It's Two a points. brand maybe, new building. Maybe in basketball, but not in football. No, you're wrong. Uh, Auburn, Wait, Auburn is a gr- Auburn. Auburn did it, and you know I'm Auburn an alumni, a new and I can't even get tickets. Auburn no, built a new I'm, ta- I'm talking arena. about I'm talking about their basketball stadium. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. But well, you cannot compare right. the NFL to college basketball. Thank you, Alex. Alex. <laughs> I'm they're sorry, about, you just they're about can't. to spend like 80 million in free agency. And not to mention, the stadium's just a bad example. They we can 20, agree to disagree. They on paid that, their Alex. quarterback this year 29.5 million dollars. Like him or not, that's not on the cheap. <laughs> yeah. Well, and if you want to talk about on the cheap, like the stadium, a brand new stadium instead of refurbishing an old stadium, like th- that's not the example to point out. And the fact that they're going smaller, right, that's because- what every stadium is doing, and they're making more luxurious spaces and things like that. So, Right. If they were going to do the stadium on the cheap, they would have put lipstick on the pig on the Correct. Nissan Stadium. 
All right, next. I'm so confused by that. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate you, man. I'm, I'm just, it's on me. I'm confused. I'm, it's on me. Titan Woman, next up. Titan Woman, what's up? Hey, guys. I'm kind of sad right now because my grape was sleeping and I'm very upset. Uh, I think the uh, the weather is like all the Titan fans that like Mike Grable will have a cold heart right now. Oh, Titan I think, Woman, I, I thought about you. I knew you'd be upset by this one. Yeah. Yeah, I am really upset. And I'm like Kat, I, the guy from Kentucky. Was it Kevin? Was, yeah. Am I correct on that? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mike did nothing wrong, okay? I love Amy, but she needs to go back and look at the tapes. Uh, we didn't win all the games, okay? But listen, if you're a Titan fan, we won. If you, we've got a big heart. Uh, her, her father is turning in his grave right now. There's a big hole in Texas that's open because my grave is gone. Okay, next to Jeff Fisher, my grave is sec- the second best coach that we've had so far. And I want to go back and look at the tapes and see what happened. We had to fight the referees. They gave us bad calls. On all on, on different different teams, different plays, and why don't they fire the offensive coach if they're going to fire anybody? Not Mike Grable. He did his best, and you watch him on film. He never said anything vulgar. The kids can watch him, watch his mouth. He never talked ugly. You watch the other coaches on other he did teams. Did drop the F bomb. They, they did everything yeah. else. They're not teaching. Uh, he never said anything ugly against anyone. You watch the <laughs> other coaches on other teams. They're saying ugly stuff all the time. That's not the way to look at coaches. Mike Grable was great. That's all, right. all I've got to say. He was great, great, great. All right. And I think woman. we're going to be stinking right now because we sent Mike Grable along. Bye bye. That's bad. Really bad for Amy. I'm sorry, Amy. I want you, but right now I'm kind of sad because Mike Grable is gone. I'm sorry. Oh, tight so woman. We love him you. Because your I passion. really love him, and I, he, I love the Titans. And he did nothing wrong. He did everything he could for the Titans, okay? Okay, Titan woman. We're here for you. I love you. We love you. Love you, too. We love your passion for this team. You're right. He did drop an F-bomb in a press conference. Outside of that. (laughs) And he, like, tried to kill all the childhood heroes in a press conference. Not tried. He did. He just lined them up and just knocked them off the wall. (laughs) You, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. December gone. Ooh, people are in their April feelings gone. today. All right, uh, more of your reaction. Is your tooth gone? <laughs> the, the Mike t- Vrabel gone. The Titans fired Mike Vrabel. More of your reaction next. 615 737 1045. What's happening, good people? Ron Slay here, man. Let's go get our. Uh, um, health in order, people. Like, let's get a little push for it, a little jolt, if you will. Low T Center can make it a great one in 2024. If you've been feeling a little tired, grumpy, notice lack of motivation and drive, got weight gain and loss of muscle mass, these could all be signs of low testosterone levels. At Low T Center, they make it easy. Make it happen. All you got to do is go hit them up. LowTCenter.com. Book your appointment online today. That's LowTCenter.com. Low T Center, reinventing men's health care.
Three H three HL one oh four five this home. Brent Doherty, Don Davenport, Ron Slay with you. What up, though? Mike Vrabel fired his Titans coach. Getting your reaction, 615-737-1045. Jared in Mount Juliet is next. Jared, what's up? What do you think, man? Well, I want to make sure I've got this straight. Uh, Carthon said the collaboration between him, him and Vrabel was good. Uh, they were working on a shared vision. Um, pleased with player development, and the injury situation would have made it, uh, made it hard for anybody. But, yet yeah, today we fired – a good head coach who's a proven winner. And as far as I'm concerned, his, his biggest challenge these past two years was working with a miserable roster that, that, that the GM she hired put together. Um, well, we there was a collaboration his, with regard yeah. to that <laughs> roster structure as well. Uh, yeah, but, I mean, honestly, what's he going to say today about Mike right. Vrabel? He's, He's not, not going to throw Mike Vrabel under the bus. Nah. Well, this team, he, this team was not that far off. Um, it probably a lot of this could have been fixed in one off season. I was pleased with what they did last off season. I think um, I think, I think, the, I think the way the team performed please. is part of it, but it's not all of it, and I'm not even sure it's most of it. No, I, well, there's an old adage out there that, that goes like this: "Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned." Oh and I watched her piece with Mike Keith, and I didn't see I didn't see a lady on there who made a decision based on this. I, I felt like she was upset about something. I, I believe what? the exact opposite of what what they're they're telling okay, us. Okay, this is the dumbest thing I've ever. No, heard. it's not. Just let, let, I, but, but, nothing wait, like wait, wait. a woman scorned. What the hell does that have to do with anything, it's, dude? In your what? mind, it's, it's because not, she's it's female. Sexist, it's not a sexist remark. No, that's, that's exactly what it was. Actually, that is no, it was. wasn't at all. It, you know what? I, was, this is what man. I think about Amy Adams Strunk. I Thank think you, she's brother. a hell of a businesswoman. I think what she saw as a CEO of a business, <laughs> Slay's putting his head down because he's like, God damn it. Now you got Babs going. What the hell? <laughs> Why would you make a stupid call like that? <laughs> woman scorned. Now, like, now, she, now just she's woman about scorned. to show you about a woman scorned. You're talking about a woman that's scorned. Made. See, this is the problem. You are the problem. You are the problem right yeah, here. Yeah. A woman scorned. Why? Because she is the head of a franchise and a business and she made a business decision Has because nothing to do with her being a woman <laughs> saw actually i think it, it's probably even more impressive that she don't give a beep yep. about feelings or making somebody feel good all she cares about this is my take is winning and right now whatever that was that <laughs> dynamic in that building was not built to go win a championship. Now, could it be a mistake that Mike Vrabel's gone and Rand Carthon is there? Maybe. Who knows? Time will only tell on that. But to sit here and say, oh, it's because a woman scorned, that's why she fired Mike Vrabel. At the end of the day, they've had two straight losing seasons. They were 1-8 and in their last nine AFC South games. A lot of it you can point to John Robinson, who she also fired, by the way, and his misses at important draft picks. Yes. But you can also point to uh, questionable staff hires by Mike Vrabel. You could probably also point to, which, by the way, you were pleased with the moves in the offseason. What? Yeah. DeAndre Hopkins. <laughs> yeah. That's about it, yeah, right? Yeah. Because that Dillard move didn't work out. And who knows if that's on Rand Carthon or Mike Vrabel. But anyway, all that to say. Or someone else. That was, or, or someone, someone else. else. Yeah, who knows? But. <laughs> my, my whole deal with Amy Adams Strunk is she's a su- successful businesswoman. She has said, I'm going to let my football people make the football decisions. And there clearly was a divisive line in that building, no matter what Rand Carthon's going to say in his press conference, because he's going to take the high road. And I would assume Mike Vrabel would take the high right. road, too, because that's what you do right. in business. And you don't burn bridges in relationships, words, right? Is, yeah. And it's not going to work when she is is – the the stopping point for the head coach and the general manager. Right. That's not going to work. I mean, how how dare her as a woman change her mind? Yeah, she was a woman scorned. That's the dumbest crap we've heard today. <laughs> that was, that and there's was, been some dumb. That was a tough one right there. <laughs> Sorry. I don't, you guys know me. I'm not one of these, no, like, right. yeah, go was, off. Hey, no, like, I don't on. ever you care. I'm like, whatever. If you, you want, if you think it. women don't belong in sports, great. That's whatever. That was, that's that your prerogative. On. But to call and say something dumb like yeah, that, I delivery. have to call it out. I'm sorry. Bad delivery, bad take. Here we go. That's bad a terrible take. Give us some more. You want some more? Yeah, hell yeah. Give me some more. Event session is in progress. That's just definitely true. John and Levin. John, what's up, man? How y'all doing today? Good, John. I hate to follow that. <laughs> I guarantee you, John, time, John, it can't be that bad, so you're good. 
I got them wrote down here. I'll be real quick, but I want to hit a point. Miss Strunks, she holds the money. Enough said. Uh, <laughs> I mean, well, that too. <laughs> she signs all the checks. That's right. true. And she is the CEO. Uh, so uh, I, I regret to see Coach Vrabel go. Of course, Miss Coach Belichick may be open, but I'm sure he probably wouldn't come to Nashville. Um, please. Would keep you want there. him? Yeah, I would take him, yes. You would want Belichick? Yes. Uh, please take Derek, keep Derek Henry, match whatever you have to, win him a Super Bowl. In fact, win him about a half a dozen. And uh, he might make it a half of uh, six more years, as tough as he is. Get him a line and keep number 28, Tajay. Um, I can't think of his last name, but he is a Spears. very good player. And he will supplement any running back. And keep, we need another end to support. Um, Big Jeff. E-top. Yeah. And uh, general managers, we can't seem to get anything going, but please don't waste these draft picks. We need a line. Peter, Wait, uh, there's Peter a... Skorowski that they drafted last year is a great guard. Keep him there. Appreciate, appreciate you vetting right there, brother. You're hitting it all, yes. on, all on the head right there, man. Like, this is, and a I'm, lot of that, too, and I'm, is, I'm gonna tell is y'all further conversation. I'm, I'm, I'm but, quiet But they have this. Tajay Spears for, well, for at least three more years, by the way. Also, real, real quick on Derrick Henry. They, it's not about matching anything with Derrick Henry. Derrick yeah. Henry is unrestricted. He can do whatever the hell yeah. he wants. Yeah. He can go wherever he wants. It's, a good, it's, a game. it's not about matching anything. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to use today as a emotional day. And I, I'm, I want everybody to get there because we can talk more logically moving forward. But today's the <laughs> most. Think so? I know, I know, no, we're gonna have to because I'm, I'm, I'm holding to it. But I think this is good. You know, what I mean, to vent, and get this out. So y'all keep. I don't it know if this is good for me. I might have to remove. No, you got, no, you got, you got, let, yeah, you got, let, you got to let them roll, babs. See, you know what I mean? You got to let them roll. Like the people are hurt. You know what I mean? And that's I can't tell you what my heart rate is. That's understandable. Right now. That's, that's understandable. And we, 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 we knew it was coming. And so it's, it's here. It's going. You know what? It's going to happen again as soon as. Derrick Henry takes his first trip to oh my gosh. Lord knows where. But can, here we go. Can you imagine the day that Derrick Henry leaves? Hey, man. What the phone calls are going to be like? We're going to get a straight jacket for Babsy, y'all. Y'all don't worry. <laughs> they need a straight jacket for Titan Woman as well. <laughs> Poor Titan Woman. Malika <laughs> next up on 3HL. Malika, what's up? Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. I just want to say um, I'm disappointed. We should have gotten better players. Our only bright spot was D-Hawk. Rabel had plenty of chances. I'm disappointed. I just got to say, good luck. Let's get a better coach. It's um, Amy's decision at the end. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you, me. Malika. Pretty wow. good right now. Huh? Well, Are we already... a reason there. Oh, Who is that? Might go logical there. There. Yeah, I, guess, I guess we're done venting. Nah. I, I got some more. There's more. <laughs> Give me some more. Let's go, y'all. Uh, Alex and Franklin. Alex, what's up? Yo, Alex. Hey, guys. That's Hi. What's up, brother? Uh, I, I'm just, I guess the one thing that I'm looking at is, is the five places that are also need a head coach. They are all looking at Mike Vrabel right now is their number one. That's um, good. It, it's, it's just, he's a, he's a, he's a tough minded guy. He's a tough minded coach and that's what you need now. Mm -hmm. He may have brought on some offensive guys that maybe maybe we didn't didn't work out, but uh, you know hopefully he'll learn from this experience. Um, I think what hurts Nashville a lot and the Tennessee Titans fan base a lot is he was such a quality individual. You people can argue you know that he didn't get this done or they didn't get that done. But it's very rare in, in today's in today's uh, you know world that you get a quality individual like that leading men like he did. Okay, and Agreed. you heard what Derek said today. Players loved him. Mm -hmm. That's definitely true. Players loved that's him. True. That's true. That's definitely true. But that's not a reason you, to keep him as a head no, coach. No, I was going to say, you know where he can go? No. Where Slay always it's talks the about good guy <laughs> the good guy board. Yeah, no, I winner. agree with you. I think I think Mike Vrabel's a good coach. Thank I just you, think Alex. it didn't. Yeah, I didn't. It didn't work there. That's not the same Alex, is it? Uh, no, it's <laughs> Alex from Stroh's. Remember him? <laughs> so I would I, I would I would want to know I would want to know though like 
And someone has to answer this. Please, listeners, when you call in, I, I keep forgetting to ask, how long being a good guy and you lose, are you content with having this? Like, that, that's what I want. Like, if everything else around you has changed and there's one cog that hasn't, how long are you okay with losing? Is he a great Hell yeah, great guy. Like, it ain't many. Not It's not many people that's not great guys when you put them in a situation where you can just go coach and be you. Like, you're, you're in a dream job in this situation. It, <laughs> I, I will say this. What? <laughs> so, like, we did have we did have a guy that wasn't a great dude, at least to, like, anyone around here. Okay. Named Kim Wisenhunt. That probably, <laughs> I was waiting. I was I like, is he going to call names? Oh, my I gosh. heard about that. Oh, my gosh. I heard about guy. that. I heard stories. You know what's funny it's not about Alabama him? Now. I've heard from <laughs> who isn't. I know. <laughs> it's, it's the land of lost coaches. Yeah, yeah like and Alabama. lost players. Um, Zach um, Mettenberger's there too. Yeah. His son in law. I've heard from people that worked with Ken Wisenhunt like a long, long time ago that he was an awesome dude. But I don't know what happened. But can you, as, as an employee, like cut your time shorter because you're an A? Yes. Yeah. I think it definitely happened with him. You can. Yes, you can. If you, you are stay, a great dude, maybe that does give you, you an, another yeah. another chance, yep. let's right. say. Yep. But good, but they got a contest for it, man. You can go to apply. Like you can go to apply out of that. Like there is no it. better than Mike Munchak Munch, as a person. Uh-huh. Like it's, He's it, the best. I'll never forget. I loved him. Mickey Ryan asking Mike Munchak about – like the history with the Colts or something like that. Like they had lost three games in a row to the Colts or something, whatever it was. And Mike Muntag like snapped him off, like in a in a interview setting with a bunch of reporters. Mm-hmm. And so somebody else asked the next question, and Muntag like started to answer it, and then he stopped and then he looked at Mickey and he said, "Mickey, I'm really sorry for the way that I responded to that question. <laughs> hmm. I'm like really sorry about guy. that." Hmm. Hmm. And I was like, "Wow." But, I mean, uh, he's not here. Yeah. Nope. I wish he would come back and coach the offensive line. You wouldn't need three offensive line coaches. No, you just all one. you need is Munch. Yeah. You need like half of him. Somebody asked for the number. It's 615-737-1045. Which yeah. I've said 3,000 times. I get it. I get it. On me. JC in Clarksville. JC, what's up? What up, JC? Hey, what's going on, y'all? How Yo, you doing? What up? Um, just want to comment on the, the Vrabel firing. I was hoping he would get at least one more year to turn it around, mm-hmm. you know, with uh, him and um, and Rand coming on together for that one year. And this is what happened. I just hate to see him go. Um, but uh, I'm kind of curious as to, you know, where he'll be next. You know, what if something crazy happened like Philadelphia got put out the first round, they fired Sirianni, he went to Philly and brought in Arthur Smith. Just my thoughts. Dang, but, uh, look at you. You're already digging deep, JC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> that could, they could lose. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, it, they on a downward spiral yeah. right now. 615-737-1045. Uh, let's go to Larry in Nashville. Larry, what's up? Yeah, man. I just feel like a lot of people overreacting to the variable being fired. Mm. Uh, if he didn't want to get right, you know what I'm saying, time to bring in somebody new. You know what I'm saying? You can let the GM do his job and let the coach do his job. We need to get an offensive coach to uh, get Levis and his offense right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Wherever want to – he want to be uh, – he a good coach, but he can go to wherever he want to go to and have full control or mm-hmm. whatever he wants to do. You know what I'm saying? Uh, new GM, new coach, new stadium. You know, we got Will Levis. Bringing in a new era in Titans football and Amy, we trust. There you go. Tighten up, man. Thank like that. Say. Appreciate like you, Larry, man. I like that. See, he can go. Yeah, like it's it's okay to he can go somewhere, and be successful, great. Go get it in, man. He probably, he probably will. will be. Yeah, g- good. And, Hell yeah, and he's a good guy. Probably learned a lot good. from this. Yeah, it's like that's that's what's up, man. Sheesh, it wasn't here, y'all. Like. <laughs> I, <laughs> you said sheesh. Yeah, like hey, man, it was one. They won one AFC South game. In the division, the division one. Really, They've won know one the AFC you know, South you know game in the year, last two years. Yeah, you know, and last year it was garbage. And the, you know, the division. What is the NFC South? Um, Tampa Bay and Atlanta and all them. Is that the NFC the South? NFC South, yeah. Like that probably is the <laughs> terrible. Is that's more terrible than this division? Right above them, us, y'all. It's us. 
We won one game. <laughs> like one and eight in the last two. Come on, y'all. Hey, man. I understand. Like that's part of the job. You gotta go win. Like it, it, can't give a person credit for fighting through ninety two new guys with injuries and all that stuff when you finish number one and then don't get the same credit. You got to accept the same credit when you lose like that, too. That, that was a pretty amazing job. Hell, yeah, it was. Great job. <laughs> hey, can we, let's do it. Let, hope we don't do it again next year. Guess what happened? It happened. And then the and next then year. And then guess what happened <laughs> yeah. again next year? Three years in a row. And guess what? Now the numbers start to add up. The percentages add up. Like, you can't keep winning like that. But also, like, I don't know if if that's, that might not be his fault, but if, you had the people around him. Man. If something happens like that three years in a row, can, can you tie that to something organizationally? Like about how strength and conditioning is going? Hell yeah, and, and, who's, in, who's, who's hiring them? So the people that were right. associated with it are, guess what? Now gone. It, 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 it's, it's, you said it's, sheesh. It's simple, man. <laughs> It's, it's a all right, lines are loaded. More of your reaction when we come back. This, this hour is all about you guys. <laughs> Titans fire. Mike Vrabel. Hey, More next. 3HL 104.5. This up. Hi. Pella Windows and Doors of Nashville. That's who you need to call if you need <laughs> replacement windows or doors. <laughs> Um, and that's exactly what I needed. I did all the research for you. I went through all the companies and I found out that Pella Windows and Doors of Nashville is the absolute best. And you might be surprised to learn how affordable quality windows and replacement windows are from Pella. And here's the deal with Pella. You know, you can hear me talk about it. You can go on Google and see that they have a 4.9 star review with a ton of reviews on there. So, you know, they're good. Or you can uh, listen to these Surveys based on a 2022 survey of leading window brands among homeowners. Homeowners rated Pella as the leading window brand here in Nashville and also rated Pella Windows number one for innovation as the most trusted window brand and that they would recommend more than any other window brand. And lucky for you right now, they got a deal going on. 50% off qualifying installation, no money down, no interest, no payments for 12 months so you can afford your new Pella Windows and Doors of Nashville. Schedule a consultation. Check out their limited time special right now at PellaNashville.com.
3 hl 104.5 The Zone. You can watch the show live on YouTube, Facebook Live, and Twitch. Twitch, please. <laughs> Paint the perfect Twitch, picture. Please. I, think you, I think you meant that one, Babs. Twitch, please. I did. <laughs> Very much so. Uh, Frank says, I'm thinking we didn't cover the scorned woman topic enough. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Gosh, I've seen yeah, I'll show you a scorned break. woman. <laughs> One who owns a franchise who wants oh, to win gosh. a freaking championship and not lose. How dare her want to own a successful franchise? Somebody called her Jerry mm-hmm. Jones Jr. earlier, and I'm like, Jerry Jones' problem is that he doesn't fire coaches. Right. As friends. And he jumps into all their decision-making. Everywhere. Right, he's over there on the sideline. The right. The table. <laughs> woman scorned. Yeah. yeah, that was something. For those that missed it, somebody said... Uh, She's acting like a woman scorned. Amy Adams Strunk. Yeah, scorned because he didn't win. Next. I would love for Amy Adams Strunk to be sitting here and hear that comment to her. You know what? It wouldn't even phase her because yeah, she's she a laughed. boss. She laughed at that. Phases me, obviously. <laughs> Let it go, Davenport. <laughs> like, is it okay for a woman to want to win? Yes, 100%. Great. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Next, like uh, Josh is at Greenbrier. Josh, what's up? How are y'all? Good. All right. So, I was in the mix a little bit about the firing of Mike Brable. I think he's a very good coach, and I do think he'll be coaching again next year. But I think him always promoting in house for offensive coordinators really done him in this year. Mm-hmm. And also, what do y'all think about us interviewing Ben Johnson, Detroit's offensive uh, coordinator for the head coaching position? I mean, all 100% of, yes. Yeah, all of the names will be involved in all of the searches. So, um, I and, don't know. And Ben I, Johnson has ties to Rand. Yes, and that, that's where I would concentrate. So, like, the, uh, the guy in Houston, the OC in Houston, like, that's another one. But Rand said they're going to cast a wide net. So, And why wouldn't you? Yep. You, you want to yeah. do your due diligence. I mean, this is – this is Rand's biggest moment in the NFL. Yeah, because I had this conversation with my dad, and I'll be honest with you, my dad wanted Vrabel gone. We uh, had this conversation on Christmas, and I told him, if we get rid of Vrabel, I would really, really want Ben Johnson from Detroit. He's done a great job with uh, with that Lions offense, for sure. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate it, man. Mm-hmm. 615-737-1045. Jeff is in Mount Juliet. Jeff, what's up? Hey, good afternoon. Love the show. Thank you, brother. I've got a, a question, maybe just to clear something up. So it ran, you know, he was on and said that he didn't have anything to do with the firing decision. So if that's true, is he truly 100%? Is he the hiring manager, so to speak, for the next coach? Because I'm just, you know, and then there's a comment, you know, Don, you had made that, you know, Amy said she'll let her football people make football decisions. Mm-hmm. So did that include Rand with being involved in the firing, or did he just say that? You know, is that just common? I don't really know, but it just sounds like it's a little, you know, choppy uh, there. So just curious on that piece if Rand will be the decision maker uh, for the next coach. We obviously, we don't know, right? We're not in those meetings, but. I think that some of that press conference was also taking the high road, moving along. I do think that Miss Amy wants her football people to make football their football decisions. That's why she hires them. And I feel like there was an issue with uh, everybody agreeing on those football decisions. And that's why she had to step in. As simple as that sounds, and it's not that simple because there's so many other factors, I think, in this. But that's where I come from. Um, so I would think she will be a big part of, you know, who this next head coach is going to be. And part of it is because she wants to make sure that that the chemistry is there and that this is a franchise that is set up to go win a championship where everybody's pulling in the same direction. Does that make sense? Mm. Yes. What I'm saying? Yes. Yep. So I, I'm not sure how, I mean, what do you expect Rand to say in a press conference too? Like he's not going to say something that's going to, 
paint him into a corner that's going to come back to bite him later when they hire a coach. That's why he didn't want to answer the vision question that was yeah. asked 8 million times. Yeah. Because what if he says, yeah, this is exactly our vision, and then they end up finding a head coach that they love that – you know, people are going to come back and say, well, you said this. Yeah. I mean, what's, what's he, there he to win He did say some that? stuff. There, that, yeah, that was a difficult position to be put in, yep. that press conference today. <laughs> and I think he handled himself well. He did say some things. He said we both reported to her. Yep. That clearly illustrates what kind of, of uh, flow chart they had organizationally. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Miss Amy wants that anymore. Right. It's uh, enough of it. I've seen enough of it. I gave I, you an opportunity. I think she wants to, to talk with one person. Yep. He also said, I want to run an unbiased search, meaning he's running it. Yep. Definitely a bigger say in it, without question. And, and she and she entrusts him to do it. I mean, she went and hired him. She hired him. 615-737-1045. Matt is in Franklin. Matt, what up? What up? What up? How you guys doing? What up, Matt? Hey, first off, I'm going to say uh, I'm on uh, – I'm I'm all I'm raising two daughters at my house. I got three girls in my house with my wife, and uh, I'm for I'm for Coach Babs. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that. <laughs> I like that. Boy, leave, it, leave it to an old Southern boomer to to drop <laughs> drop the wrong wrong phrase on the wrong show, right? Uh, <laughs> That's all it took. <laughs> all right, so I'm also on Team Slay. You win, you win or you don't, and that's how it works out, right? The the stats were bad in the last certainly in the last nine games, possibly the last sixteen. Do the math. I don't know what it is. Yeah. But like you don't you don't win, and I think the problem with Vrabel, uh, as much as we all loved him, and he was a hard nosed coach, he talked about being hard nosed too much, and then didn't coach him up to be hard nosed all the time, right? Mm. I mean, he uh, I think he was too loyal to bad coaches. Uh, look at Todd Downing as the example. Like homeboy should have been. I do hair for a living. I cut hair. You and, cut my uh, hair. <laughs> yeah, you do. Really? Yeah, yeah. You do. But listen, man, he, he Todd Down. I cut hair, and I could tell you what play was going to be run. If I could do that, the other <laughs> side, other sideline could do that, right? right. So, so you that might be the quote of the day, Matt. The <laughs> yeah. he should have been gone prior to the DIY. He was. A, he should have been gone after the DIY. He wasn't. And then, you know, you continue to kind of promote mediocrity. I think. Uh, yeah. I think it's time for some changes and let's tighten up and have a good uh, next year. Check Matt out and then the factory in Franklin structured. There you go. Aren't you? <laughs> See you, dude. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right, no doubt. <laughs> I got hair, and I could have told you what could've, play could've was. Could have picked play. <laughs> could have picked that play. That was play. funny. Matt's a great dude, man. Uh, one of the best. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. You do. Mm -hmm. Matt can do it. Bo in Nashville. Bo, what up? Hey, what's up, man? Yo, what up, Bo? All right, all right. Hear me out, guys. Number one, I got I got oh. three three females in my family too. So, Babs, I'm on your side, baby. <laughs> <laughs> But let me, let me, let me, about five weeks ago, I tried to get into some parsley action at work and nobody wanted it. Thought I was crazy. <laughs> After our bye week, the only week they get off, Mr. Rabel was up there getting his props in New England and he was showing a lot of love, more love than a head coach in Nashville should show, in my opinion. I came to work the next day and said, does anybody want to bet $100 that he is going to be New England's next coach? Now, I know Amy Adams Strunk is a, she's a great owner. She's not a shallow-minded person, and she was going to make her decision anyways. But here's my take. Mike Rabel was going to New England and will be their coach regardless of whether we fired him or not. Your opinion? Um, I think that it's a very real possibility that he's the coach in New England next year. Yes. yes. I'm going to wait and see. I mean, that's the word around the campfire. Yeah. And who knows how much he wanted to be fired to right. be able That's to the go word to around. that That's opportunity. the word around the campfire. Yes. It's funny, like, these these types of things are like, you know, <laughs> I always say, I think it was in Pulp Fiction, too, like, you guys are worse than a sewing circle. <laughs> Where, meaning, like, all the gossip and all this stuff, man. Yeah. If y'all only knew <laughs> how how much we all. Listen to gossip in that business, man. Yeah. It's it's, but it's funny because hey, like, that's where you get some of your best <laughs> info. I know, but you have to kind of decipher it a little. You bit. You do, and you have to be careful with what you say. <clears throat> right, and um, that's why. Uh, yeah, just and that's kinda, why we give opinions. Yeah, yep. and we say listen between the lines sometimes. Yeah, true. <laughs>
I mean, we all yesterday said, don't be surprised. If there's, I think we said it in the promo. Mm-hmm. There's big news today. Maybe 20. <laughs> and that where we were going off air? Well, I said he wouldn't be back at all. And I said he wouldn't be back. So he was like 80 20. You were 70 30. I was 70 And then you were 80 20. Yeah. Slay knows his stuff. 615 <laughs> What's coming up next, Hunk? Uh, that would be an extended 3 HL after party. Oh, and then you're going to hear Ron Slay one more time. Oh, I'll Franklin Nolensville right. basketball. Here we go. Franklin and Nolensville. I, I, I Listen, will accept venting conversations out there, y'all. Everything. Only if I can record them. You can come up to me and vent. Only if you let me record them so I can play them back on the air tomorrow. Especially if you cry. Oh, I'm recording. Oh, Titans woman. We Titan love woman, you. We love you. We love no you. Doubt. Definitely. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. By the way, Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry are probably going to. <clears throat> can you imagine the phone calls we're going to get when <laughs> Derrick Henry's not here? Like when mm. that news gets announced? Yeah. The uh, Los Angeles Chargers have signed Derrick Henry. He prepared. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. That's a, I mean, oh, fun. By the way, that's not true. No, 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 no. <laughs> they, these are jokes, people. We're joking. All right, love y'all. All the opinions, love it. Good night. God bless. See ya. Wouldn't want to be y'all.